What's up, guys? Welcome to episode six of the DT podcast. I'm joined here by my great host Trihex. How are you doing today? Great coast. I love it. The short shortening of co-host. Pretty pretty hot. Pretty yeah, hot, it was man. totally intentional. Not because I woke up, you know, an hour ago. Yeah, I'm actually doing good. Uh, this is probably the first time since episode like two that I'm adequately rested for uh, episode today. I'm actually becoming uh, waking up at the appropriate time for a daytime USA working podcast listening audience that we're targeting here. I'm glad that makes at least one of us. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I'll be in California hopefully the next time we do this so it'll effectively be even two hours earlier for me so we'll see uh, how that goes ooh, if this ends ooh. up getting moved later in the day or if I can actually maintain a normal human sleep schedule we'll see um, Damn, for the record my hair is really long I don't give a fuck about combing it right now it needs to be, um, it needs to be cut <laughs> so we're just fucking going all out today and because I, I yeah, fuck it I, I didn't. I wasn't gonna say anything, but because you said it, I I, I had to crack the laugh. Now I'm yeah, sorry, well, bro. There you go, man. Um, my old. Uh, what do you? Uh, what the? What was like the pop punk that that stuff? I'm gonna be. I'm um, returning to that. My days of uh, newfound glory and good Charlotte and uh, all those other Blink 182. Those dudes, you know. Uh, Avenged Sevenfold. Uh, who oh else yeah. Here? All, all, all the rock band bands. bangers, man. Yeah, the Breaking Bads, the Shine Downs, all those, all the good. Times. Thirty seconds to Mars. Yeah. Yeah, like, I, I love it, dude. I love it. These are all the songs I would play the most on Rock Band, by the way. Just, just so, just so everyone knows. Okay. Like, oh, it's the guilty pleasures. <laughs> um. But yeah, no, you're you're cool, man. I, I've learned, dude. There are times where legit, like, uh, webcam can hide a lot of things. Like, I, I I can like have like the most gross beard with like no maintenance whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Chat's totally cool with it. I actually care for once and like shave or like trim it up. And I'm like, what happened, bro? Why'd you why'd you nerf the beard? They get like they get really attached to having the epic like majestic man cave beard. I guess I don't know. Yeah, it actually took me a while. There was, um, I think it was the week before last, or it might have been last week, where you came on, and for some reason you looked really different. I couldn't put my finger on it, and I realized later it was because of the facial hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Purely because I wanted to look like not like a scuffed uh, caveman uh, going to visit my family for Thanksgiving. You trying and, to say uh, something? Or? What do you mean by that? Um, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like when you can, when you're like not on the webcam and people can see you in ultra HD graphics, that uh, you know, people can see that you look like a, a wildebeest. Uh -huh. At least me, you know, okay. whenever I'm not oh, like making just you, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So. Okay. <laughs> so today we decided to. Um, you know how you ever watch a sitcom and you know that um sometimes they run of ideas for episodes and then they have the one where they like sit around a table and they just do flashbacks of other episodes. You ever watch old sitcoms they would do stuff like that? Yeah, it's a common uh you you add more depth to like the early episodes that had no meaning behind them and you try to infer more into those uh, original occurrences by giving a backstory and adding and building depth upon the backlog. Yeah. Yeah, let's go with that. That's what we're doing this time, okay? <laughs> yeah. There's a lot It's of like Futurama, but we plan to do this. Like they did, right? Sure. Yeah. There's a lot of people that don't know. Um, there's a lot of people that don't know, I guess, the background of Trihex, a.k.a. It's Michael, right? Just pronounced like normal Michael. Yeah, you okay. got it. And then, um, and then my background, I mean, a lot of you guys here are going to be familiar with it. A couple of you won't be. But um, just for, I guess, new listeners or people that are not, you know, super lore-invested Destiny fans or Trihex fans, I guess you can kind of flesh out our backgrounds a little bit more just so that we know a little bit more about each other. Yeah, that, that's probably the biggest thing here, too, actually, is that I don't think you all may know most of Destiny's audience already knows about Destiny's past, but I actually don't know. I don't know diddly shit about your past. Uh, to be honest, even this whole collaboration now is kind of comical because we both know, I would say, very little about each other. I don't know your backstory. You don't know my backstory. I know very little about you other than the face value of like what you stream and what you enjoy doing with political debates and debating in general and getting to the objective truth of everything that you're interested in, in learning further about. Yeah, we don't we don't know much about each other. So in an effort to strengthen that bond and and heighten that bromance, I, I I thought it was actually cool to say, yeah, let's let's uh let's let's rather than like do the the bromance off stream, let's do it on stream. Let's do it on podcast. Let's make it happen. Let's let's cement the hand holding metaphorically. Sounds good. Um, I broke it down basically into the we talked about the categories beforehand. So I guess basically we'll walk through. We'll both talk about our beginning. I'm guessing like first jobs, first things we ever mm -hmm. did for actual exchange of cash, and then how we got into streaming, and then how we got to, I guess, where we are today. 
Um, and then kind of to wrap it up, you know, how did the podcast come to be? And then we can probably take a couple questions if we see anything good, depending on how long that goes. Yeah. 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 Sick. So to um, start with first job you ever worked. First job I ever worked. So I was a, I was a, I was a Yu-Gi-Oh playing introvert high school student, um, who got a flip phone at age 16 from my mom and told, and she pretty much guilted me. And she's like, all right, look, I'm getting you a cell phone. Um, mine this is like 2006. I'm getting you a cell phone. It's a shitty flip phone. Costs forty bucks. You're paying the bill. Deal with it, or I'm turning the phone off. And I was like, "All right, cool, whatever." So I got a job at a McDonald's uh, that was built into my local Walmart, and I was smart because I I applied at that one specifically because I thought the McDonald's inside of a Walmart doesn't have a drive-through, so therefore it's less bullshit to deal with on any given day. That was my I, my high IQ play right there. So I uh, I worked at McDonald's at age sixteen. Uh, I was only there for four months until I immediately quit when I could. And you didn't um, have to work. There was no drive through. There was no drive. Yeah, because it's the McDonald's inside the Walmart. Yeah. So there's only like oh, the lobby. So lucky. And yeah, okay. yeah, it's the gift and the curse, though. Okay, there, there were some trade offs there. The McDonald's in a in a in a Walmart typically is a much uh, smaller kitchen. So you're like you're literally if you're like cooking, like I, I'm, I'm I kid you not, it may be the width of my stream room, literally. Like you're you're. When you add in like the grill and the other in the in the sandwich assembly line behind you, a uh, station like yeah, you're you're pretty much you know freaking ass to ass behind each other. Like you're you barely can move through. If you have like like if Big Bertha is like the obese old lady behind you making sandwiches and you're on the grill, like you're you're literally she's like right on you, dude. There's nowhere to walk through. Honestly, it was really frustrating actually. Um. Not to mention, it's this really weird thing where because you could see the entrance door to Walmart when you're working in that depressing ass kitchen all day, it was like I got like a weird case of like uh, I don't know I, I want to call it like melatonin withdrawal where like I'm I'm behind you know um, regular fluorescent light bulbs from the from the ceiling and like I'm seeing the the beautiful tempting daylight like it's a beautiful day outside I'm just stuck in here depressed as shit hating where I am right now it fucking sucked dude. It's like the prison in uh, the Dark Knight Rises or whatever. You can just you can see the escape, but you can't actually get there. Ah, dude, you even see the, the little light beams from the window, dude. Yeah, yeah, the whole thing. And then, uh, but yeah, I was only there for four for four months. I uh, I, I dipped out. I'm sorry. First first call here for uh, for an anecdote. Uh, I dipped out because I was a good worker. I was on my P's and Q's. I was uh, I had strong work ethic because I didn't want to. I didn't want to be the weakest link in the McDonald's workforce, quote unquote. And uh, so. At night when they close, everyone has like a chore or an errand to take care of. Some have to like, you know, restock the freezer. Some have to, you know, I don't know, wash dishes. Some have to like, you know, um, uh, apply the anti-grease, uh, whatever fluid to the to the um, to the flat top grill that you cook the burgers on. Mm -hmm. um, the worst the worst chore by wide margin was dishwashing. Shit fucking sucked, dude. These like so whenever y'all order chicken nuggets at McDonald's, like the the fryer basket that you put the nuggets in, then drop into the fryer for. Or is so coated, so thick in grease, like just clearly months of whoever was assigned dish duty not giving the slightest fuck about actually scrubbing the damn thing. So just like it gets coated and looks like shit, and it's like it's it's really like plastic covered and coated in shit. And I'm like sitting here actually like oh my god, I have to actually like do it really. I thought that was like you know I was naive, right? So I thought that was from one day of it being in the fryer all day. So I'm sitting here like getting like tennis elbow trying to fucking scrub the stupid uh, basket to oblivion and I actually do it and then the manager's like wow Michael you did a great job I'm gonna make you do dishwashing from now on because you did such a good job and I'm like wait a minute so you're you're punishing me by giving me the worst chore by a wide margin because I did a good job on it then mind you the next day the other guy who had it didn't he, like just fucking rinsed it and threw it right back in the thing didn't even didn't even bother washing and I saw him do it that meant you know, that I'm you weren't friends snitch. with a supervisor and he just wanted to throw you in a shit job that's what that means by the way <laughs> dude <laughs> yeah I got that that burned me really hard I was like dude man fuck this place bro I'm out dude I, I was like so ready to get out dude and mm -hmm. and by the way for context here 2006 um minimum wage hadn't kicked into the upgrade yet so it was still it was still 515 in uh, Louisiana yep. at the time. Yeah. So it was like, yeah, like I, yeah, it was, it was trash, dude. My, my checks were like garbage. Like me giving a fuck was like, I got like $135 every two weeks. Like it was like, it was, it was nothing. It, that barely paid anything. You combine my car insurance uh, and the phone bill, and I was pretty much down to like nothing. I was working to pay for a car to drive 
the places I didn't I couldn't do anything with anyway because I had no fucking money. So it was like a zero zero sum gain working at McDonald's. So I dipped out. That was my first job anyway. My first um, job was at McDonald's too. That's kind of funny. Um, really? Yeah, I feel like the I feel like a lot of the worst parts of my job though were tied to working in the winter and being in an outdoor restaurant. Like um, I think we called it back drive was working the um, a lot of places have two drive through windows and then one is kind of the first one you run up to and then the second one is the second one you run up to and that that first one you go up to in the back of the restaurant it was always fucking freezing cold when it was the winter time and you had to work that position that was the worst fucking position to work holy shit it was so fucking cold um, but for the most part I mean otherwise yeah I mean it's a, it's a job at McDonald's it kind of sucked and yeah yeah. Um, so I have here actually. Um, I only went through, uh, believe it or not, four jobs was is my entire work history until I got into streaming. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't have to go over each of them, but yeah, I, I do, do have... after McDonald's. Well, so after McDonald's, um, I had a okay. So it's a funny thing here. I ended up working at a Mexican restaurant called uh, Tampico's, and what happened is my friend Jesse uh, had another friend who was a busboy at Tampico's. One of the customers forgot their wallet on the table after leaving the restaurant after eating there. The busboy, you know, they, the busboys, they come after you leave and they grab all your dirty dishes off the table and they clean the table. That way it's ready to serve for the next Real customer. quick, Tampico's, is yeah. this like a normal sit-down restaurant or? Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a normal sit-down okay. Mexican restaurant and, and cantina. Gotcha. Uh, it, uh, yeah, yeah, family-owned, uh, not a nationwide chain of any kind. Just like, you know, they have like four locations, I believe, at this point now. Sure. Um, We'll get more to that here in a second. Don't worry. That the family owned part's very, very important to know here. <laughs> oh God, up. of course it is. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. We're gonna get into this one here in a second. So the uh the friend um the wallet was missing, the gentleman came back, uh the 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 friend denied it, gets pulled into the uh to the office, has empty his pockets right then and there. The wallet is in his possession, fired on the spot. So they had a so they had a uh, so guilty. So still doesn't pay. He uh then uh, Jesse tells me, you know, hey, yo, uh, do you want to apply at uh, Tampico's? We need someone right now. And I was like, and I, not knowing shit about busing or restaurant industry or anything like that, I just purely off the notion that I was getting paid 50 cents more an hour and it wasn't McDonald's, I was like, I'm in. Let's fucking go. Like, I very brashly went in and fucking did it. It's so crazy I, I, how excited back then we get over like a 25 cent or like a 50 cent raise or like the idea. I remember going from McDonald's to the casino, the idea that I get paid nine dollars an hour. was like unimaginably fucking amazing. Yeah, yeah I got a better one, too, when it comes to the uh, to job number three here involving uh-huh. like minuscule amounts of raise and getting excited over that. Uh-huh. Uh, crazy how the standards have changed now. But yeah, I ended up being a, um, a busboy at Tampico's. And it was crazy because, again, family owned restaurant. So the, the labor like normally when you had a corporate chain, you have like the corporation uh, entity or portion of the of the overhead mandating labor. Like, you know, they they, they say, you know, hey, you, you guys sell thirty thousand dollars of food a day. Therefore, your labor dictates you're allowed this many workers on the floor at any given time. However, Tampico's all out the window. They were like, yo, we need you here every day. Um, can you work? Can you work six days a week? Can you work? Cause we're only close on Sundays here. Can you work Monday through Saturday? And I was like, Yes. So the entire of summer 2006, I was a busboy at Tampico's, and I like would get 60 to 65 hours a week. I was making bank. Like even though the, the pay was shit because it was like 550 an hour, I was making like you know like 200 per week on the checks. I was like I was power bombing that time, dude. And I quickly saved up and got my first major purchase that enabled my forever uh my forever internet geekdom. I got a, got my personal laptop. I got a gaming <laughs> laptop. I got an ASUS G1. And before gaming Omega Law laptop, but it's honestly it's what I needed at the time. An Asus so. G1. What did this look yeah. like at the time? Oh, dude, it looked like an Alienware Ricer thing, dude. It was um, I don't even remember the. You know, it's that crazy. I don't. It had Windows XP standard. Um, I don't remember the processor, the RAM amount, or anything meaningful. I don't even remember what, what GPU had in it, but uh, it could run. It could run. It could run Fear on high. That's all I remember. Fear <laughs> one. That's like all I remember, dude. <laughs> like. <laughs> It had a DVD drive. The hard drive was whatever mechanical. wasn't wasn't a SSD. Um, yeah, it's all I got. And it came with like a cool. Uh, it came with a cool backpack. I bought it off New Egg. Okay. But yeah, it was the it was my first major purchase I got. I was pretty happy with that. Comes with an N, a built in NVIDIA GeForce seven thousand seven hundred. If you go by the numbers today, it actually sounds like very futuristic because we're on like the two thousand series now. But back a long time ago, they they we kind of started the numbers over again. But yeah. Dude, you actually found, oh my God, you actually found it, dude. Yeah, dude, I was, 
dude this was i was geeking man this was my first time doing an unboxing like i i never had like you know sure i like i had a psp uh like the year prior but this is my first time like with my own blood sweat and tears buying something big like i was very proud of what i got here dude i was super hyped for it so um now this this job here kind of extends i'll just kind of tell you the whole story about how i ended up getting fired from this job um, so I was a bus boy there and then I was a very responsible bus boy. And that led to me becoming the, uh, getting familiar with all the food, the cargatos, chimichangas, fajitas, all that. And, uh, they needed someone to organize the food. Typically in a restaurant, what happens is the, um, the cooks will make the food and then it's up to the waiters to then go into the, the mosh pit that is the, uh, the expo line and grab the correct food, the correct chimichanga, the correct, uh, chicken steak nachos, the correct queso dip. You know, whatever, right? And then grab your shit and bring it to your table as you need to do. Ooh. Problem is, you know, by by Thursday, Friday, Saturday, you know, we're getting slammed in five directions at once. And there's like all the waiters have to wear like a beeper on the back of their apron, and uh, the the cooks can like buzz like you know beeper one through ten, and you're buzzing, you know, number nine, like where the fuck is Michelle at? Her food's getting cold, and like no one's there to help her out. So naturally there was demand for an expediter someone to be the middleman to get yelled at by the cooks and get yelled at by the waiters to make shit happen i was gonna so, say for the for the job site work we usually call that window that would be impossible for me to imagine somebody running somebody not running that station like somebody has to be or at the casino that's usually where your supervisor went somebody has to be running window and even at mcdonald's you normally had um the guy bagging orders was usually the person yeah. was like who's kind of like in charge or like that would sometimes you're the supervisor going to make sure shit was running well yeah yeah, definitely. No, and you're right about that too. That is a, that's a dedicated position at McDonald's whenever things get busy as well. Mm -hmm. But, but yeah, family-owned uh, businesses, the fucking anything goes. So, <laughs> dude, yeah, no, oh, I want to say here again, family-owned business man. Oh. No, this, this seems like common sense now when you work at any any like chain restaurant. But family-owned business, dude, this was like not standard at all. It was mm -hmm. a complete shit show, dude. Like, dude, I was getting. Oh, and they were foul too. They would like they would cuss them out. I don't know if that's like a thing that you. I'm, I'm sure that like cursing and smoking were standard at like the at, in the. The restaurant industry because it's so it's so high stressful because because time is so important you know yeah. um but because like comparatively you know if you work at retail um you know if you walk into a retail center like walmart and i, I don't have like a, a i don't have a red i don't have a one terabyte red dead redemption 2 bundled ps4 pro for you it's like sorry bro it's december 21st you're a bad parent sorry for waiting so long <laughs> fuck out of here bro gg comparatively you walk into a restaurant if i'm out of whatever the fuck you want if you want like a1 steak sauce on your ribeye and i don't have a1 you're looking at me like well i don't want this fucking steak anymore like i am moody and i'm moody tethered to my hunger so now i am i am hung i'm hungry and angry so i'm hangry and i'm mad at you about it so everything the customer's mad about is now your problem you're deeply invested into it and it's a time sensitive issue so it's like the whole thing is like compound to be this giant stress bomb the entire fucking night right yep so the point is, though, and at the rest at the restaurant, uh, these cooks, man, whether it be Pasquale or or Juan or um, I forgot the other guy's name here, dude, they're all cussing at me in Spanish, like you know, fucking puto, da 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 da, telling me how how unreliable all, all the waiters are. Dude, it's, it's it was very much a us versus them. It was very much a always a front of house versus back of house thing. Is that, is that standard for you too? <laughs> oh yeah, dude. That one of my favorite things. Yeah, I can kind of go into it. But oh yeah, dude. Front, back of house is fuck them, dude. Kick the cooks get <laughs> dude, so yeah, it, fucking it was... rude on shit. When you're in the middle of a rush and, and a and a poor little uh, you a poor little server coming like, um, can I get a side order? And the cooks like, that'll be thirty five minutes. We're busy. It's like, damn, dog, really thirty five fucking minutes for that? Fucking calm down. Holy shit. Yeah, dude, it, 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 it's the worst, man. When you, when you bring something to the table and they ask you, hey, can I get a side of something non-traditional, something you can't ring in? Like you can't you can't ring in like a side of butter. Butter yeah. does come on the ribeye, right? But there's no button in the computer to ring sure, in the yeah. order extra side of butter. So you got to go over there and be like, hey, I need a side of butter. Did you bring that in? Yeah. I can't fucking, I can't dude. fucking ring it in, dude. Uh, I'm getting triggered. So many pet peeves when I would fucking, <sighs> because when I became supervisor, I learned every job at the casino, back and front, uh, front of house and back of house, because I wanted to be able to do everything. Nothing would piss me off more than a little lowly fucking server, you know, coming up like, hey, I ringed in this wrong, or hey, I did that. And then the servers, and the, or the cooks be like, yeah, did you ring that in? Did you remember to charge for it? It's like, motherfucker, let us worry about that shit. Cook the fucking food. <laughs> You don't need to sit here and fucking do some broad and spectrum dude, analysis awesome. of the front of house business. Don't worry <laughs> if we fucking charge something. You don't do the fucking inventory. You're not managing fucking payroll. Why the fuck do you care? Shut the fuck up and cook. The fuck is wrong with you? 
Oh man, so yeah, but yeah, cooks get hella no. fucking attitude. Yeah, Hang on. we we will get. I will get to this further here, but there the I I have PTSD. I want to bring it up here real quick about that because fucking AVT. It's the it's the term I heard every fucking day. I want I, I wanted to ram my head into a fucking wall. You don't even know, dude. Actual versus theoretical. That's all they ever threw at us, bro. They're like ABT, ABT. Did you ring that in? I can't fucking ABT. ring in butter, you stupid bitch. God. We at the only thing I've ever heard for annoying acronyms. Um, I had a manager, manager of a McDonald's restaurant. Do you, at McDonald's, did you ever hear HBO? No, what's oh, HBO? God, what handbag out. Get it out the window. HBO, HBO. That's what they'd be shouting you. HBO, get it out. Handbag out. HBO. Because every time you hit next on the McDonald's thing to show the served, it would record your times back in the uh, right. in the office, Correct. so you could see your average time. Yeah, HBO, hand it out. <laughs> oh shit, dude. Oh. oh, dude. Hang on, wait, wait. I got. I, yeah, oh go god, ahead. dude, you're triggering me too right now. Because all right, the equivalent of HBO was fucking pre bumping. Oh my god, dude. Got to keep our average ticket times down. We, we, oh, our I did this. Sub ten minutes. These motherfuckers would just bump like everything. Are you talking? You're talking about how cool. you would just hit that serve button even if you hadn't handed the bag out yet, and so you'd have yes. to remember. Oh, I did. I did that they shit all the lie. time. I did that shit all. Lies, I would dude. smash that shit fucking hard, and people were like, "What's the next turn?" I'd be like, "Um, it's a ten p." Oh shit, I don't remember actually. And you'd be like fucking scrambling to try to remember what the per. And then you'd have to open the window, and you know they were gonna throw a bitch. But you're like, "What did you order again, ma'am?" And they'd be like, "Ah, oh, I had the ten And you're like, "Oh yeah, yeah, I got it. Don't worry." Because <laughs> you're like just smashing that fucking serve button. As soon as they've collected the payment, at the end you're like, "All right, McFlurry, serve. All right, number five, number ten, serve. All right." And you just be smashing. And you're like, your times for like a fucking lunch rush sometimes would be like thirty five seconds. I'm like, "How the fuck did you?" You do that it's like listen man trust me we got this shit on lock <laughs> oh shit yeah sorry <laughs> no dude no dude okay the thing about this okay so for, for time to understand here whenever you're at mcdonald's there is usually like a um an eight panel window four top four bottom and you can hit you know serve and have that panel be done move on to the next one in an active queue mm -hmm. the thing is though you know so the timer is moving on all pending orders that have not been served yet it's like but a when you fucking serve, mission impossible every single fucking number on that screen is going up and they turn yellow and yeah. red depending on your yeah you know, oof. yeah that it, go, it goes from green happy yellow taking a little while red it's overdue like according to corporate mandated times this should have been served by now because based off of it was being cooked at, at the time it was mm -hmm. initially ordered it'd be there on time and i think However, 90 here, seconds is your goal i think from when they enter the drive through to when they're served it's supposed to be 90 seconds tops it's like your order i think is where what we went for yeah it's, it's fucking crazy well the thing that we're mean um me and this are talking about here though is this whole pre-bumping thing is you can bump it early to make your your serve times artificially lower to make your restaurant look good in the corporate spectrum more in your current region mm -hmm. for your area director but what we and him are getting at specifically here is the fact that you you live off the recall screen because you can bump orders and you have your pending orders, but you can hit the recall button and see what's already been served. And you're working off of that. Like you you bump first, then hit recall, and you're looking at like recall six of ten. Like, okay, what did I bump uh, four minutes ago? Like, what the fuck do we need right now? That's what we would often do. Like, it was just like all, people wouldn't live off the actual active queue screen. They would live off the recall function, which is cheating, but no. you know, it is what it is. So, um, continuing on though, I, uh, I I went from a bus boy to an expediter, and at first I would just organize the food in the window for the waiters who were just you know, and I'm sitting here, and now I'm the the, the paranoid you know dad sitting here buzzing all the the beepers trying to get these motherfuckers to come get their goddamn food, and they're nowhere to be found because they're all busy getting double sat, triple sat, whatever. Mm -hmm. And eventually, it's like okay, I have to rise to the occasion. I had to literally bring the food forward. I had to learn how to how to carry trays and maintain balance and. And bro, bro, these fajitas are fucking. This is not some like little little bullshit ass uh, uh, buffalo wild wings. No, these are like fucking Tampico's loaded ass fajitas, bro. These things are fucking heavy, man. Like fucking heavy, dude. If I'm carrying four, that thing's probably twenty five pounds minimum on on one hand on that tray, and balanced and hot as fuck. They just they coming out there hot on fire, dude. So I had to like get good real real quick. Um, I did. And I became the uh, expediter, and I was the uh, and I was like the guy who would, who would run the food literally. So it became it, I went from meeting minimum wage to now it's getting minimum, uh, I got an upgrade to like seven an hour, and I got tip ten percent from every waiter at the end of the night. So That's, I was like, "You are super brave." 
Expedite is, uh, if I was running window, I could never run food because if I would step out of that window for two seconds, some <laughs> dumb fuck server would walk up and start fucking shouting for shit. And I would come back and five minutes fucking later, there would be plates in my window and I would have no fucking idea what would be going on. Man, I don't know. I felt like when I was running window, I could never, you could never leave to run something unless you literally like were running out of employees or some shit because some dumb fuck would walk up to the window and ask for some random fucking shit and you'd be totally lost like five minutes <laughs> later. Oh man. Man. you're not wrong okay that, that did happen they got destroyed eventually though here's the thing about it i was beta i would never like i was not an alpha wolf yet i didn't feel confident enough to ever pull that card mm -hmm. so when they would like ask for shit you know the the again the the, the cooks would, would curse mountain spanish tell them to go fuck off and they were like no you wait for michael to come back and then you ask him what you need they literally mandated that i i got the authority to i was their voice yep. you yell yeah. at me about what the fuck you need and we'll go from there mm -hmm. so I, I i got some power i got some trust it felt really really good like we actually me being there was a very vital thing that made me feel very valued to the whole thing to mm -hmm. the point where everyone was watching me run food so often. Like I'm literally running back and forth in that kitchen like all night long, sweating my ass off that I had regulars who were at the restaurant asking me, man, you man, you're really fast and really good, man. When are you going to be a waiter? And I was like, oh, uh, well, I'm 17 right now. I guess I could I, I couldn't be a waiter until I was 18 to serve alcohol. And they were like, and so I was like, all right, cool. I guess I, my new goal now is to when I'm 18, uh, be a waiter. Um, because like, you know, I was, I was making good money compared to the minimum wage slave, slave ends and whatnot. But then I saw what the waiters are making. And I'm like, man, these boys are, these boys are uh, climbing over a hundred dollars a night. Uh, damn. And, and, and then you they wanna, suck. You want to talk about, um, the thought audit or whatever. People talk about streamers not paying taxes, man. When you were a tip waiter, <laughs> your goal, you had to claim the bare minimum so that your job didn't pay you a wage because servers get, I think even back then it was 213 an hour. Is there a minimum it's, wage? It's, it's, it's still 213 yeah. an hour. Yeah, 213 an hour. You had to claim up to where the minimum wage would be because if you claim too low, your company has to actually pay you and you'll get fucking fired instantly depending on where you work if they have to actually compensate your paycheck. But all you have to do is claim enough to hit that minimum wage. And sometimes you can do it just on your credit card charge tips because a lot of those are reported automatically. But past that, that money was fucking tax-free, boys. Nobody fucking, no servers claim that shit and there was even like a lot of bullshit tax advisors there was like oh you only have to claim 20 percent of your tips are you legally you only have to claim like that was some bullshit but nobody fucking claimed that money that was some funny shit oh you ain't lying there man dude mm -hmm. my, my checks were always void always had excess income from credit card tips that mm -hmm. was way more than what the federal, the minimum wage was mandated for the 213 so yeah. yeah checks were always voided out entirely and you're right yeah i yeah i got away with murder by, uh, by comparison yeah for sure <laughs> it, it was crazy man well, um, so I did that, um, um, and then again, okay, I'm still getting here to the point where I get fired here. So, uh, I, after one year of Goku training as an expediter, I, I was able to become a waiter at age 18. Um, big step up here. I, I kicked ass at it because I essentially had a. I probably would have been a terrible waiter, honestly, but because I had the whole one year of being 17, being an expediter, dealing, learning from all the idiots. You got to think here. For one year, I watched every dumbass waiter make every mistake. Forget to ring in something. Forget to ring in their entire table's order and it'd be like 30 minutes in the weeds. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine taking a whole, like a, like a party of eight, a whole family of eight, right? You take their entire order. You get, you know, you get two more tables, another table, mm -hmm. and you got to get their drinks and everything else. And at some point in the scramble of getting your, your whole section full, you forgot to ring in a party of eight, eight's order. 30 but minutes in. My favorite thing when orders like that happen is when you have to fucking Frankenstein together shit from pre-existing orders. When you literally, when someone forgets or fucks something up and someone's been waiting for 30 minutes, like, okay, hold on. Take it to 14. We've got a steak from that. I want you to take that. I want you, you're like Voltroning together like a fucking order to try to get these people their fucking food. And oh, everybody's like no. scrambling to like replace shit on the other fucking plates. Oh, shit. Dude. You're doing all this while orders are constantly being rung in and, and like taken out of shit. Oh, man. That shit is crazy. <laughs> That's not even the worst here, bro. When I get to when I get to the the my my other waiting job, the one I did for eight years at Chili's, that's mm -hmm. the one where I'm gonna get into like some real triggering PTSD shit here. Cause that's not even like that's not even that big of a deal. It's this other thing that I wanted to like murder people in the kitchen for. I'm like, how can you be so you have one task. Cook the food when it hits your computer screen. Y'all are so fucking bad. I, I can go back there and do better my fucking self, dude. You you fucking you're killing me you are digging two daggers into my kidneys and i'm fucking bleeding out right now you're killing me you know that right you're how sitting here sick arguing with me you're arguing with me about how you're right at what cost i still need the fucking ribeye yeah dude. you no kid no cook has ever won a debate 
with a fu- with a front of house oh. staff about needing some food. It's, you're not gonna debate your way out of cooking something. <laughs> We should fucking, if we live together, like, in the same state, we should go, like, apply to the same fucking fast food restaurant and, like, secretly record, like, working shows there. That's oh, always God, been, like, dude. I don't know if you ever think about this. I, this is, like, my fucking masturbation fantasies is the idea, because you know how you deal with the worst fucking customers, is going back yeah. and getting a fucking job like this and just waiting for the right customer, like, the right one to mm. fucking make your day. And mm. then to just be like, you know what? I actually don't need this fucking job. I'm going to give you a piece of my mind. And it just fucking unload on these yeah, motherfuckers. Just fucking, just it fucking would, metaphorically jizz all over oh them and then walk Oh, my out. God. It would, unironically, <laughs> it would be like one of those moments where like your, your fellow employees would applaud before your manager would walk out and fire you on the fucking spot. Oh, my God. It would feel so fucking good. Holy shit. Dude. Yes. Yes. Hang okay, on. We'll, we'll get, we'll, oh, we'll yeah, get, yeah. We'll get okay, it, too. Yep. I, have, I, have, I have back kitchen horror stories. I have... Um, customer from hell horror stories. I got, I got all that. I'm sure you do too here. I'm almost done getting to the point where I get fired at Tampico's. So for one year, I do Goku training as an expediter, and then I become a waiter at age 18. I kick ass at it, and then it's, it's, it's all, it's all good. You know, I, I became my birthday's in February, so I became a, a waiter February 2007, and I'm, you know, it's, it's, I'm, I'm doing great. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm literally, by the way, I'm doing so good. I'm clearing like a, a grand a week, by the way, to give you an idea of how how much ass I'm kicking here. It was fucking sick, dude. Um, um, and then I get fired on Mother's Day 2007, May 2007. Um, unreliable family business that was slightly racist. So what happened? Well, Tampico's is normally closed on Sundays. It's like on the sign, literally. So like we're, we're like hardcore closed on Sundays. But the manager, Maria, was uh, who's like 45 or whatever, was like, Michael, I need you. We're going to be open for Mother's Day. I need you here. Can you please be here? Just ask me this on Friday night when we're checking out. Hey, listen, a day and a half short notice here. No big deal. We've been, we've never opened on Sundays here, but I need you to be here on Sunday. Can you do that? And it's like, whoa, whoa, bitch. I got a, I got a, I got a graduation party because I'm, I'm graduating from high school. Um, I kind of need to, I got like family coming over and shit. I, I really need to, you really should have told me it's like, you know, at least a week in advance, I would say. And it's kind of like unfair to like, I mean, I can see, but I, I doubt I can. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I and then I call I call the restaurant that Sunday morning, 8 a.m. Um, she's not even there, by the way. Only only the uh, dishwasher was there. And I'm like, yeah, tell Maria I can't be there because I got, I got my family's already here now for my graduation party for high school. And, you know, I come in that Monday. I'm like, yeah, look, I couldn't be or something. So I had shit to do because you gave me a, a fucking day and a half notice for some bullshit um are we cool and she was like no we're not cool you're fired and i'm like wait wait i'm one of your top people you're really gonna fire me you're, you're really gonna fire you're really gonna fire me over but not even a warning not, not a write-up or anything like i've never been written up you're going to fire me over that really are is your ego that fragile that you that because i called you out on how you like did it fraudulent scheduling tactics here that um like are, are you just mad because michelle couldn't come in on, on sundays that's really mad right now? like are you mad because she has a kid, like because she has a kid, she couldn't come in. But because I, I'm just like a young, unaccountable high school student, I couldn't come in. Like this is such fucking bullshit, dude. Like I was so fucking mad. And then, and then I caught on that later on that they actually like they were slowly like filling in more and more of the family to be waiters because I guess they wanted more of like an authentic Mexican lineup of of of, of wait staff mm-hmm. to reflect the Mexican restaurant or something like that. I don't know. To me, it was like really, really whack. I was like, all right. Because uh, I already knew that, um, see, there was Maria, then there was Pasquale. Pasquale was the owner of, of that particular uh, restaurant. And I don't think he really liked that, the, that there was any, like, black people waiting. Like, he was very old school. I think it's actually mad it was even, like, I don't think he even wanted males being waiters at all. I think, yeah. he, only, I think he only wanted waitresses. Yeah. So he was really mad that I was a, that I even became um, a waiter. And I think he was even more mad that he had a black person as a waiter at all. Real, someone um, in the chat said, um, Triac should have went to corporate. Man, listen, I don't know why people do this. <laughs> People jerk off working for family-owned small businesses. Fuck that noise, dude. These are the fucking... Sometimes... They, I guess they can be the best places to work, but they can also be the worst places to work. You don't have fucking corporate, all right? OSHA doesn't give a fuck about your ass, right? This shit is... Like, yeah, there is no one to run to when you have problems. Yeah, there, was, there was no corporate, yeah. There also, was literally... Also, in what you said about, like, only hiring waitresses, this is really fucking funny. There is this pizza place that I go to eat with Nathan, like, down at our little plaza near my house all the time. I swear to fucking God, the way these guys hire, it is always... They always and they've gone through like 15 employees it's always mm-hmm. like a really attractive girl with a really I knew it. fat fucking I knew ass it. every time and they always wear the same like very tight pants and i noticed that like every time i come in i was like oh cool new employee what's up and then they'll turn around to ring me in i'm like oh okay i got it <laughs> like every fucking time it is the like mm. every single their model employee is so fucking funny 
But um, yeah. Okay, so I keep going. So fired yeah. because you they said you no call no showed on a Sunday, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I I guess yeah. And then that led to me. Uh, and I was sad, man. I was very depressed uh, throughout summer two thousand seven because I was broke as fuck trying to find an equivalent job. Um, there was a um. Here's the funniest thing here. Probably the biggest decision that influenced the entirety of my whole career here, right? I was so down in the dumps that I was like, all right, you know what? I got to apply to Walmart, man. I don't know what else to do. Um, it's been, you know, a month and a half. I'm, I'm bleeding right now. Um, I need to figure out what's next, man. And I, uh, so my mom knows the manager, uh, ma uh, you know, her, her and the manager of the Walmart I'm, I live near or were high school friends. So it was like, he was like ready to auto hire me. All I had to do was go online and do the, do the application. So I go to do the application and it was like one of those like bullshit 200 question um question surveys about you know your personality assessment and i was like oh my god dude really for fucking walmart dude fuck this or i, I said I'll, I'll do this later on and i ended up playing like i don't know like rock band all day or some shit oh. like that with my friend, i hate when you have and, these uh, bullshit ass fucking interview things for bullshit ass fucking <laughs> jobs i remember when i started to get my uh when i was doing my carpet cleaning job the guy's like why is it that you want to work here? And it's like, motherfucker, I need money. Why the fuck do you think I'm here? <laughs> the fuck is wrong with you? Why are you fucking asking me? It's humiliating enough that I'm filling out this goddamn application. Now you're giving me the fucking, the, 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 the interrogation on why I need the fucking job? Why the fuck do you think I'm here? I got bills to pay, motherfucker. That's it. <laughs> Don't flatter yourself. Jesus Christ. Yeah, man. So uh, I get a 200 question survey. I, I blow it off that day, and like I, I I'm like really like, do I do I really have to work at Walmart, dude? I'm trying further to find other shit out here. Eventually, another another nine days passes by, and I'm like, okay, fuck, let me do that survey, dude. So I, I forgot about it. I I finished the survey. I applied in. I slam dunk it. You know, I, whatever. I I'm I'm not a not a serial killer according to the survey, so I'm able to work at Walmart. And uh, my mom calls back Terry for my my application. He's like. Yeah, tell Michael. Unfortunately, um, I, I really wanted him. I actually need overnight stalkers. It would have been I would have definitely had him on here immediately. But um, his survey got flagged in the system because uh, he didn't finish the survey within forty eight hours. I can't override, unfortunately. So due to me, like, being all butthurt about the survey, I literally couldn't get hired at Walmart. And I promise you, if I had been, I probably would have, like, lowered my expectations and remained as a Walmart overnight stalker for who knows how long. You know, I would have, like, I would have, like, minimized my expenses to, to match the, the starvation wage I was going to get paid working there. So... Um, thankfully that didn't happen. Kind of, kind of funny here though. Um, but yeah, I couldn't get hired at Walmart to make a law and got, got declined. Um, now what happened though is, um, August 7th, 2007, I apply at, I actually, I applied at Chili's to be a waiter. Cause I, you know, I, I figured by that point, all the kids are back in school and I can actually get a job there now. Cause all the, all the summer flings are going to go back to school. And, uh, I went to GameStop to, uh, pre-order um, Smash Brothers Brawl and Mario Galaxy. And when I went there to do two reserves, um, the the um, the manager there who knew me from way back and was really cool was like, yo, man, you know what, bro? Do you want to work here? Like, he asked me. I didn't, even I didn't even ask to apply there. I was like, dude, let's fucking go, bro. So I got hired at both Chili's and GameStop same day, August, August 2007. Ended up working both jobs for the next uh, four years straight. And that leads to the next chapter of like where we get into the real waiter slash restaurant PTSD hell that is fucking Chili's Bar and Grill. Chili's, um, the lesser known cousin of Applebee's, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, actually, fun factor though, uh, the Chili's employees call Applebee's the poverty Chili's. Like they call it Crapplebee's. Oh, it's really? even, even, oh, yeah. They're actually worse. They're, they're managed. I can tell you for a fact, they're actually managed worse than uh, Chili's is. Okay. Believe it or not. Oof. But, um, you want me to continue going or you want to um um because it, it all leads to like because this is where it gets to the, the big thing about how i get into the the streaming thing but yeah it's like i start up to that point at least yeah okay okay so <clears throat> so um so what happens is i work at I, I get hired at gamestop and chili's i work at gamestop monday through wednesdays and i work at chili's uh thursday through sundays i do this like full-time double job schedule where i'm only off occasionally every other wednesday from gamestop for the next four years straight like i'm i'm like after the 2007 summer drought of being financially unstable or unstable, mm -hmm. I was very, I, I was humbled. I was like, no, this is a very clusterfuck schedule, but I enjoy um, 
not being broke anymore, yo. I have no free time anymore, but that's cool though. I can I can live with that. I'd much rather that than the stress of like having to figure out how I'm gonna pay bills and shit next 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 month or whatever. Were you working part time um, in both these places? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, the thing about you know being a waiter is that it's not really about like you know when you say uh, part time, like uh mm -hmm. you know part time is like what under under thirty hours a week. Is that correct? Um, tw it depends on the place. I define it differently, but yeah, yeah. There. I was working like thirty two to thirty three hours a week at, at Chili's. Um, I mm -hmm. worked when the shifts were good. Like I wouldn't like I'm working. You know, Thursday all day, Friday, Saturday double, Sunday, oh, and yeah, Sunday yeah, morning. Cool. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm working the bread and butter because Monday through, like, I mean, Monday's good too because Monday night football, but like, I don't know. Like, I'd rather GameStop was more fun for me at that point. So I'd yeah. rather just like peace out. Anyway. The worst thing about doing part time work was that um, sometimes you just like working an eight hour day felt like you went in, you worked an eight hour day, and you got, you know, your decent paycheck. The thing that sucked was working if you had like a four hour shift. Nothing sucks harder than like a four hour shift where you're coming in and you've got to work like five to nine or like four to eight because it fucks your entire day up. Like it does. If you would like, if you, you want to get it done, like 10 or 11, like you don't want to fucking go out and then have to go home and get dressed for work to go in at like three or four. And then by the time you're out, it's like nine or 10. It's like, fuck, like working those part-time shifts. Like even if it's only like four hours of work, it feels like it fucking ruins your whole day. I hated those types of fucking shifts. Yeah. yeah. It, it, you know what it reminds me of those nighttime shifts like that, that completely disrupt your, your day flow are the equivalent of night school. If you've ever had the misfortune of saying, Hey, I'm smart. I'm going to I'm going to apply for Tuesday, Thursday only classes and I'm going to get that uh that 6 to 9:30 p.m. class only twice a week. That's smart. It's better than Monday, Wednesday, Friday. No, dude, backfires big time. Night school is the worst. Dude. It drags so bad, dude. It is like it feels like you're in the hyperbolic time chamber, dude. Those three and a half hours drag, man. Fuck, fuck that dude so yeah night shifts same, same thing I, I totally understand that yeah i can't imagine people bring a lot of energy to those classes too so <laughs> well yeah because also like what teacher what college professor wants to work you know night classes you know yeah. i unless you have like some kind of like sleeping disorder or whatever like so usually the teachers you're going to get are, are mediocre in my experience and the the, the classes the class is just low energy there's never going to be like an enthusiastic i want to be here everyone hates it i feel like everyone who's stuck there is literally people who who procrastinated getting their schedule done promptly and their and the only option left was the Tuesday Thursday night classes mm -hmm. super garbage i would highly recommend don't don't do it here um <laughs> crazy crazy well so yeah i was working at gamestop uh monday through wednesday over the chilies on the weekends um i do this for 4 years uh, it was a complete shit show on the um there was this unique dynamic though because at chilies again like i said before all the problems are invested into you the waiter and everything's super time sensitive. So I've had shit like, you know, we're out of, you know, manager's unreliable. We um we were running out of, they, they do the truck orders poorly. So we're running out of A1 steak sauce. We're running out of toilet paper. We're running out of receipts. There was legit one time where we were completely out of receipt paper. And so I had to like, I can only take cash only because I couldn't run credit cards because a credit card would give me a print a printer out of paper error. So it was points where like, I'd be like, hey, yo, look, I'm sorry, y'all. If y'all don't have cash, um... Did you ever play uh, the game where um where you were working at a Chili's and you had to call another Chili's in the area to get product? <laughs> oh, dude, that was all the time, dude. That was all the time. <laughs> and your fucking manager or supervisor or some trusted employee would have to fucking drive his ass over to like another neighboring store, talk to their supervisor, and then uh, sign out like a bunch of their like either paper cups or like meat or some shit, and then drive it back to the fucking store you're from. <laughs> oh my god. Here's the problem with that though. Like the problem is like you're there's there's no win for you, the waiter, right? Because again, you, you've you've incurred so much taxes on your on your on your tips mm -hmm. that if you clock in as hourly, it's gonna be eaten up as a zero wage anyway so you're not gonna get paid for that and like if you're the one who bites the bullet to go get the product that's needed here you're not making any money while you're doing all that shit right yeah no. so like you have to you have to get like compensated somehow and it's like usually um i never went for it because i'm like yeah i'd rather make money right now than fucking go than help your incompetent ass because you fucking couldn't order mashed potatoes in, in time or whatever mm -hmm. um but usually they'd have to offer like one of the waiters like um a free meal that day or some shit and boy would they milk that shit too it's like yeah i want to want a half rack brown sugar rub with like a fucking with a with a ribeye with a i want the loaded potatoes with the texas cheese fries i want extra everything on it da, 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 da. like bringing some like 30 dollar order and get it for free yeah. yeah they, they would knock that shit for sure but it would but like that costs a restaurant like nothing too so in the end you're still getting fucked it just doesn't feel like it yeah uh, yeah the, the gullible ones would go do it uh, yeah. i i yeah i knew better i was like i'd rather make money right now so because even at mcdonald's they give you they they should give you a free meal for lunch right you get to sign out at least one 
free meal, or at least I did when I was there. That's it? A free meal is all you got for, for going to get product from the store? Seriously? Oh, no, 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 for lunch, for lunch. Like, if you clock out for a meal, oh, I'm oh. pretty sure they would give you a meal. No, the, the, you get half off, is what uh, what I recall. At Chili's um, or at McDonald's? No, no, I, I mean, well, both, yeah. Uh, both you would get, you can get a half off meal oh, once a damn. day. Oh, damn. I felt like at McDonald's, I thought, I wonder if it was free. Maybe it wasn't, I don't know. I don't remember it being free. I remember it being half off. I remember getting like a um I can remember like ordering a Big Mac and it being like 250 for the whole meal. Hmm. Um so I wonder if it changed cuz you were working at um when you were, were your paycheck signed by McDonald's when you worked at McDonald's? I don't remember, dude. We're bringing up like 2006. Now it was uh -huh. only 4 months. I was not there for How long because were you? Some, I was only there for a year, but um when you work at stores inside of other buildings, I think those stores are technically owned by those buildings. I could be wrong, somebody me, but like if you work at a Starbucks inside of a Target, I think Target mm -hmm. is the one that sends you your paychecks. It's actually like owned like you get um yeah. So it may, maybe so like an inside policy like that might be different than like a corporate McDonald's or a franchise McDonald's or something, yeah. Hmm, interesting. Well, um so uh yeah for four years i'm working at there and it was this crazy dynamic because like mm -hmm. when all of the like so, you know I'm, I'm at chili's when all the problems happen they're all my they're all my fault they're all in my, in my investment to solve and figure out however by comparison working at gamestop working at a retail outlet the problems were like i can deliver the bad news easy peasy it was almost therapeutic here because when your ribeye is cooked bad or, or your ribeye is like overcooked because you wanted it medium and it came out like you know medium well it's like oh here let me oh, let me fucking blow you and hope hope the fuck you still tip me or whatever right even though it wasn't even though like i try my best here but our cooks are, yeah. are pathetic or whatever um comparatively at gamestop it's like again like i said before so let me get this right so you're gonna walk in here on christmas eve and you want not only do you want a 360 you want it you want me to get you a used cheaper 360 you're pathetic dude i've been sold out 360s brand new since like december 10th you're coming in here two weeks later because you're a bad parent you're waiting to the last fucking day you're stingy you're arrogant you're dumb and i, and I don't tell them all that but it's like i just laugh because i'm like <laughs> let me go in the back check if i have any used 360s for you <laughs> i don't have anything bro and they know they, they they settled for like a used PS2 or some shit in 2006. It was pretty funny. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the uh, the the uh, the dynamic <laughs> you of know, like, so, dude, I can't imagine the narrative. Like just thinking in my head, some fucking parent comes in trying to get a new or a used Xbox 360 and walks out with a PS2. You know, some kid's Christmas is getting fucked. <laughs> you know, oh, some dude. guy is gonna be fucking crying in two days. Holy shit! The Hall of Fame involved in this, right? Christmas Eve Hall of Fame story for you here, as far as like bad parenting goes. I can think of two off top here when it comes to GameStop, which, by the way, I can I would go ham further on talking about GameStop, but I feel like me and you have more of a, the restaurant thing to rant on, so I'm, I'm keeping that to a minimal here. Mm -hmm. But the Hall of Fame here are two things. Um, a parent walks in um, and gives me the, the child's handwritten note to Santa. Santa, I want Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, right? And I'm like, all right, great. Well, so so I, I I'm like, cool. I, I grab the list. I'm like, all right, your son wants this. Slam dunk it. Cool. I grab a grab a brand new copy of Modern Warfare 2. You know, it's $59.99 plus tax. With tax, it's like $65.08 or whatever. I'm like, all right, cool. So it's gonna be $65.08. He's like, for what? And I'm like, for, for the game. That game costs sixty five dollars. You crazy? And I'm like, no, sir. It's fifty nine ninety nine plus tax. You know, it's what the game costs. It's brand new. It came out like a week ago or whatever. What? Oh boy, oh boy, he ain't that good. Shit, let me let me see what, what you got over here. We got over here. So he, so he walks over to the Wii section. The mind. This is this is like you know. So in 2006, the Wii was like you know, uh, not quite at peak shovelware yet. Mm -hmm. But he walks over to the Wii section and grabs this game called Chicken Blaster, which is one of those like gimmicky games that's like meant for the parents to think is actually like um, intuitive, but it's really not. Where it comes with a giant like peripheral gun that you put the Wii mode into and you like shoot chickens or whatever and some kind of bullshit. So. He grabs that, which was like uh, normally it was thirty bucks, but it was like on clearance, so it was fifteen dollars. He goes over and grabs that for the Wii. Mind you, the kid wanted uh, Modern Warfare Two for for three sixty. Oh yeah, this this is this is good. This looks even more. This looks more better than Modern Warfare Two. Give, give him that game idea. And so um, so I, I'm like, dude, you're you're such a bad parent. Your your child literally wrote down what he want, and you lost your shit over sixty dollars for a game. Okay, damn. All right. So yeah, just like this this kid's Christmas is gonna be fucking ruined, dude. I I, I felt terrible, and I'm like. I the problem too is like I've I have been in situations so frequently now where it's like I, I hear you chat chat would tell me right now well why didn't you tell the guy that the game he wanted was for a different console and I'm like no look whatever they're when they get sticker shock bro you let them 
the Titanic has already been hit by the iceberg. You let the motherfucker sink, okay? You don't you don't tell him about that because that's just gonna be a slow burn. The more bad news you must deliver to someone who isn't expecting bad news, the more troublesome it's gonna be for that entire exchange. Trust me. They don't know, fuck it, let it happen, bro. Like, and even like I'm I don't get paid enough at GameStop to give a fuck about this guy being a bad parent. So I just say fuck it, let it move on, whatever, dude. It, it, it was too far gone. Too far gone. TFG for sure. The other story here is that on Christmas Eve, I think 2008, it, it, this has been a while, right? Um, guy walks in, he wants a brand new, I think he wants like the, uh, this is like the year when the Xbox 360 Slims came out, the ones that were, um, you know, the ones that had like the, the gloss finish on them. Uh, the, 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 they were no longer the Xbox 360 arcades. These were the ones that had like built-in hard drives now, finally. Mm -hmm. They didn't use like the, the little slap-on uh, hard drive expansion bay thing. Um, he wanted one of those. Mind you, we've been sold out of those since like November, so this was like a zero hope for this guy. And he is like, yo, what you got, bro? I'm like, man, the only console I have left right now, I have a used GameCube. I don't have any, I don't have any memory cards. It's kind of scuffed up, and it has an aftermarket controller bundled with it because some idiot took it as a trade-in as that. Those Are fucked you, up Mad oh, dude, controllers. It was so, oh, yeah, man, yeah, dude, yeah, I remember those so aftermarket. Bad. Some of those aftermarket controllers were so fucking shit. Oh, my God. And I was like, I mean, I got that. I mean, um... You know, I don't have any of the like, and I'm normally I'd be like, all right, cool. I, I can I can sell you a GameCube, and maybe I can get you like Mario Sunshine or Shadow of the Hedgehog or like Sonic Adventure Two Battle or some shit. Do I had nothing? I'm like, bro, here's a GameCube. Here's like Madden 2002. I have no memory cards, bro. If you want that, you can do that. And this guy, I felt so bad for him, dude. He fucking just, or I felt kind of bad because he was a bad parent. He waited till Christmas Eve, but uh, he walks out with a fucking GameCube of Madden 2002 in 2008. <laughs> and this is what you gotta get for Christmas, dude. Damn. One controller, scuffed controller, scuffed old fucking Tony Hawk 900 rim job, scratch as fuck GameCube with a fucking Madden 2002, bro. Like, it, it, dude, it was Christmas was ruined, bro. That was a terrible fucking. I felt, I felt bad for the, the children, man. That was terrible. They can't even. It's one thing if you can play scuffed Madden with your brother, but you're playing scuffed Madden alone, one at a time. Like, <laughs> dude, it's fucking terrible. Damn. So. So yeah, that was um. So yeah, I worked at GameStop in Chili's for four years until I got a, until a new manager came who was another typical corporation, um, you know, corporation drone who fell for all the shit. You know, it was like every the reason why you're not hiring the company is because you're not doing well enough. Um, your goals and all that, you need to get your metrics better. And you know, these these new these new hire external managers fall for all the shit. And they're like, yeah, it's my fault. I gotta work harder. I gotta do better. Never realizing they're never gonna fucking climb because it's it's all lies and bullshit anyway, as far as the corporate structure of GameStop goes. So this new guy comes in, his name is James, and he's from Hawaii. And he comes in and he like, dude, he's super cringe. I, I kid you not, every every horror story you hear about GameStop, this guy was verbatim that. You walked in and you want to just pick up the new, I don't know, you want to pick up God of War 3, right? Mm -hmm. This guy would hound you about do you want to pre-order Madden? Okay, well, do you want to pre-order uh Just Dance? What did you, uh are you into um are you into? Let me see here. Da, 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 da. Are you into uh, Japanese role-playing games? Like he didn't know what they were actually called. Yeah. Um, do you do you want to pre-order Star Ocean? Do you like Last Remnant? And it's like, dude, let your hat. You just pitched five pre-orders to one guy who wants one game, dude. You you gotta you gotta ease up, dude. Like I'm coaching this guy on how social skills work. I'm like, dude, you are being the haggling, greasy-haired salesman right now. You gotta you gotta be a little more natural with the whole thing, dude. You're you're making people not want to come back here, honestly. I, I can tell. That guy's not coming back here ever again, dude. You are terrible I, what the fuck you do. I wanted to tell him that. I, you know, I was At this time, I was still beta. I was not yet an alpha wolf yet. So I couldn't, I didn't tell him he was terrible at his job, but I, I wanted to quit really, really bad. Well, then he hits me with this like really insulting offer. He's like, you know what, Michael, I like you a lot, man. You're a hard worker. You're very charismatic. I think you have great, great passion here. How would you feel about being my SGA? My, um, wait, wait is it SGA? I don't know. My, my, um, my senior game advisor. By the way, let me pause here. So, for anyone who's not familiar with GameStop employee structure goes, um, all the all the people who um, the minimum wage slaves are just like you know sit there and check out people and, and organize the, the game rack. They're not they're not called I don't know, whatever the lowest position. They're called game advisors. You're a game advisor. Your job is to walk on the floor, get a read on the mom or the child and the parent, let help help them pick out games. And also at the same time, um, let them know because again, according to according to corporate uh, demanded surveys here, forty percent of customers don't know you can you can buy and sell used games at GameStop, even though it's like in our thing, it's fucking everywhere. So you have to like you know 
hey, did you know you could save money by trading in your used games? You got to like do the whole fucking thing right there, right? So everyone's a game advisor. So you have the store manager, assistant manager, and then you have the SGA, which is a senior game advisor. He offered me the privilege of being senior game advisor. Mind you, he didn't know I already worked at Chili's like, you know, full time everywhere else and making like, this is all like fuck money to me. Like I, I literally, this was like gas money, 50 bucks every two weeks for me, honestly. And uh, he uh, he was like, yeah, do you, do you want to be a senior game advisor? Uh, your pay will go from 7 15 an hour to 7 85 man. How do you feel about that? And there's a 15 cent raise every uh, every 10 weeks. And I was like, he really hit me with the 15 cent raise every 10 weeks. And I was like, Whew, or something like that, like or every every quarter, whatever, whatever, whatever many weeks a quarter is 12 weeks. Mm -hmm. Um I was just like, dude, I, I I had to laugh at it. I'm like, bro, like this, this job sucks. You suck. <laughs> nah, I would never want that, bro. And because I declined that, I guess he felt a little bit insulted about it. And he like uh he laid me off um the next the following quarter because he wanted somebody else instead. Which is funny because whenever I got laid off, um this happened in um January 20, uh, 2011, right? I got laid off at that point and <clears throat> And then um, I got into streaming by complete coincidence here, like two months later, um, and uh, started broadcasting on on uh, on on UStream TV, like or or or, or Justin TV, uh, something before Twitch was even out yet. And, and I was either, doing there was that, Justin uh, TV, UStream. There was a website called Livestream. Like, yeah, there were a lot of weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was a uh, I was on that the entire time. By the way, I had been speed running since 2004, so I was active on you know speed running and doing competitive gaming of some sort up until that point. I didn't bring up either here, but it's more about the restaurant stuff. And then, uh, yeah, I was a full-time university student um, by fall 2011 onward. Uh, rather than doing just you know a semester here and there of community college, I actually became a full full-time university student. So streaming was a very minimal thing for me because I didn't have a lot of free time. I would stream like maybe every Sunday and Tuesday if I had no homework, and I always had homework due. So it was kind of like I was blowing off homework to stream in the first place. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't really grow my channel worth a fuck because I had like all this monumental amount of homework to do as a full-time student. And um, I um, I was doing all this, still at my parents' house, by the way. I didn't move out of my parents' house until I was uh, uh, 22, actually. It sounds kind of, I don't know if that sounds like, a, like you know, like a um, lame or whatever, but like genuinely, you know, I was I was poor, I was broke, and it was a big goal to, because I lived out in the country, you know, like moving 40 minutes away towards the city was a big leap, and I wanted to make sure that when I made that big leap, I was, uh, I was good for it. So when you say um, you like lived in the country, are we talking like, population like town population like 200 or town population like 30,000 or what how like how big or what was um, the scale here I don't know how it dude it was a very rural small town I'm trying to think here of how to um I don't know what's population size actually hang on I can actually get you the answer real quick hang on uh what is the uh 30,000 is what it is what it is okay gotcha. so yeah yeah uh really really small or well not really really small but like it was pretty I, I lived outside that small city by the way so i lived out in the rural parts of an already like rural city mm -hmm. or town um so i um yeah moving moving to city was gonna be a big leap and i want to make sure i had all my ducks in a row and honestly i don't know just like sign of the economy right now you gotta think of the 08 recession happened and i had already been un i had the whole unemployment scare in 2007 so i was like really like wanting all my ducks in a row to make everything work out i didn't want to just like rush out there because i i knew the minute i, I moved out it's gonna be paying like you know at minimum four hundred dollars a month in rent. It was gonna be just like you know more bills out the wazoo. So I wanted to make sure I had all my had had like you know hella bank saved up so I can like do this correctly. Mm -hmm. um, well, anyways, I um, I moved out of my parents' house in December two thousand eleven. Um, I, I um, so I did you know fall twenty eleven semester. I did my mom's house driving forty minutes to and from every day to school. It fucking sucked. I hated it. I don't even know how I even got sick that day because there was many days where. You combine being a, a, a university freshman with that garbage freshman priority schedule where I like I had classes that were like legit three hour gaps all day. So I had to drive 40 minutes out to, to, to university, be in class all day from 8 a.m. to like 5 p.m., then drive with 5 p.m. traffic back home to my house. Not really. And, then you know, I can start homework by like 830 and I have to be up again at, at, at 530. It was like, dude, it fucking sucked, dude. I hated it. Also working, by the way, too. I had to work as well with that shit. Mm -hmm. It was like super fucking AIDS. Well, um, then I move out in, in December that year, and now I'm living in the city. Now I'm living closer to, to the university, and it's getting a little bit better. But the problem is, by the end of the spring semester 2012, I'm broke as shit, dude. Um, semester's going up again. It went from 2,800 a semester to 3,500 3, per semester. And I was like, oh, God, dude, fuck it. Y'all are killing me, dude. 
Um, cause now, now it's good to the point where the, the federal aid is no longer helping cover the uh, expenses mm -hmm. and, uh, the student debt's getting crippling. And at this point here, student loans are looking tempting. Um, but I knew better. I, I knew, to, I, I knew I'm like, like, yo, I don't, I don't think I can, cause they were like, yeah, you qualify right away for like a $28,000 loan if you want it. And I was like, dude, that's a lot of money. I got to pay that shit back, dude. I, cause I had a lot of friends who like would have. A lot of um, a lot of friends at university who 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 would get that get those loans and they weren't stressed about it. They were just like, "Yeah, I got a loan, bro. They pay me everything, man. It's cool." And I'm like, "Bro, were these guys that people loan... that hadn't been working yet." Yeah, yeah, yeah. These are legit, like you know, eighteen year olds who never worked before. And I'm yeah. just like, "Do you not understand how much money twenty thousand dollars is?" And mind you, they would get that loan and they would just like ball out control, dude. They're buying you know fucking PS3s and forty inch TVs and laptops and all this other shit. And I'm just like. Are you are you using your your student loan money for personal expenses, dude? You're you are y'all are crazy, dude. They they were not woke to what was gonna happen whenever they saw their first uh, Sally Mae uh, three fifty per month due until twenty thirty five or whatever. You know what I mean? Like they didn't know what they were getting into. I was like, I I knew better, so I, I said, fuck that, dude, fuck that. So I um um uh, student loans did look tempting, but I I I didn't do it. I instead decided to like, pause university to recoup finances. And at the same time, I had I, I really wanted to try out streaming further because I, I felt like I had what it, it took to stream competently. But the problem was with university, I was stuck there all day long. Like I could never legitimately stream for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I did that. I, I paused university. I didn't go in fall 2012. And I actually pursued just only managing two things here. Uh, you know, before I had the GameStop Monday through Wednesday, Chili's on the weekends. But now with, with GameStop gone, I had Chili's on the weekends and i had that monday through wednesday to do what i wanted to do i actually had free time now for the first time since like 2007. so i decided to i filled that void with streaming as often as i could monday through wednesday i managed to climb to a 300 viewer average um by the, by the second half of, of 2012 by being able to stream more often and uh believe it or not this is this is when try hard the global emote came into play um i was one of the uh dominant speed runners in the community and uh, the the Twitch staff liked my face, and I became try hard became a global emo because I was a, I was a big try hard. I tried really hard everything I did. Uh, you can ask my viewers about it; they, they fucking know. And and try hard the global emote happened in November 2012, around that time actually. And uh, to give you an idea for context here, uh, there was only 20 global emotes on Twitch at the time. Uh, there is now over 210 global emotes. Most of them are trash. But uh, yeah, try hard was like uh, was one was one of the first uh, twenty in there. Uh, I wish I had a screen cap of what they were back then because it's like it was so small. It was actually kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. um, and then I got a I, I grinded. I applied for partnership um, the month after in December. I got declined because I didn't have a I didn't yet have a five hundred viewer average back then. Partnership standards were really really high. And like if you had a if you had a sub button, bro, you made it. You were like you were legit in the top one percent if you had a sub button back then. Um, so I got declined back then, and then I, I I was like, you know what? No, this is this is motivation. So I grinded I grinded hard, and I, I pushed further, and I reapplied for partner slash sub button in May 2013, and I got it. And I've been and I've had partners since then. And I have you know I got some 68 month or whatever 64 65 month uh day, day one subs that are still active to this day, which is pretty cool. Um, and then and then now we're we're past this part of streaming. Now we're getting to the part where I, I go full time. This is very very quick here. Um, so for a very long time, I never thought I would ever be a full-time streamer. I never, I, cause I, I, I never thought that I had what it took to do that. I didn't have a lot of faith in myself. And, um, so I have like this, I threw out like a nonchalant goal of like, if I, if I cross 600 subs, right, I can lower my expenses a shit ton here. But if I cross 600 subs, I could, I could consider going full-time. Well, I crossed that point, um, by, um, I crossed that point by March, 2015, I meant to go to go full time, but I was a scared beta bitch who because I didn't want to, I didn't I didn't do it. I was scared to quit Chili's. I at by that point I've been a waiter for like you know going on seven years now. Um, kind of depressing in its own right here, but I was a, uh, it was a big change. It was, it was scared of me, man. I didn't want to you know I at this point I I was a senior waiter. I had the shifts I wanted. I had all the power I needed. All the all the cooks knew me. I got what I wanted when I needed it. I had was the still whole, at Chili's, right? Correct. Yeah, it's still at Chili's. Okay. I had all at everything uh, worked out to, to the way I needed as far as that 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 job went. You know, I got what I wanted for my shifts. I was able to coexist with with, uh, with 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 Twitch streaming, but it was all it was a scary leap to just ditch all that and go for this complete unknown of, you know, Trihex being a full time streamer. And I um, and I was scared to do that until I finally quit Chili's July fourth, twenty fifteen, um, is when I finally made that goal. Um, 
I finally did it. I finally have the balls to tell, tell the manager I quit. No, I'm not going on partial leave. No, I'm not going on, on vacation. No, I'm not going to work one day a week with you to keep on a schedule. No, I quit. Remove my employee number. I'm done. And then once I was full time, uh, then the Mario Maker uh, viral thing happened where I, I, I blew up with Mario Maker as a, as a content game mm -hmm. in September 2015. And uh, it was part of my 75,000 follower special. And I quickly ballooned from being like a 700 average viewer streamer to getting 4K minimum per day for the next like fucking year and a half. Oh, no. Okay. So the 4K average streamer for like the next like the rest of 2015. But like I was way up there in the numbers for quite a while. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then here we are now. Uh, and then that leads to the next part where you would then tell me about your past and how you got to where you are now because I know nothing about you. And then we get into the the how the podcast came to be. Sure. Can um my mouth is actually super dry. I'm not gonna be able to do this. I'm gonna get a drink for like two seconds, okay? I'll be right back. Sure, sure. Take a question from Chad, okay? Hold on one sec. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that for sure. So um so boys here, I, I've heard from some of y'all that you, you may find this um the bromance origin story podcast episode here kind of a boring topic. But this was really important to me. I take I'll, I'll take the blame here. I wanted to do this topic because I knew nothing about um about Steve, about Destiny here. I feel like there's like there's um the fact that we're having this DT podcast and there's like the synergy and this romance. I feel like the fact that I don't know a lot about him leads to us not being able to um to build upon each other's interest further because oftentimes I hear the complaint that uh me and him tend to monologue a lot independently and never have a, a dynamic synergy in conversation. So I um so yeah, I wanted to I wanted to do this, man. I felt like I would I would be I would do better as a co-host if I knew more about Destiny the person. So I told my half here. I'm really excited to hear his half now where I get to because I, I know he has like a YouTube video about it. But uh, again, the idea here was rather than me do the homework uh, offline and learn about Destiny, like why not just fucking do that shit on stream? Why not have the, the, the my live reaction? You know, the first time you all learned about Destiny, you know, you get to, you get to relive that nostalgia through through me, through my eyeballs instead. So I'm really excited to hear about. You know how he went from the man, the restaurant manager to the, to the cynical asshole he is now. All right, I'm back. I got a drink. Sorry. Hey, what's up? <clears throat> um, I guess um, well, I guess our backgrounds aren't too different. So obviously, people piece together a little bit. Uh, a lot of my fans already know kind of my origin story. I guess my uh, <laughs> the creation of me. I guess. Um, my first job was I don't remember. Uh, I'm really fuzzy on like a lot of the timelines. Anywhere from like. I think 17 or 18, my first job was working at McDonald's, similar to yours. I was working there for about a year. Um, my parents had moved. My mom moved when I was like 15, 16. My dad moved when I was like 16, 17. My mom moved to Florida to take care of her mom, who had Alzheimer's. She took my sister with her because my sister was homeschooled. Then my dad moved about a year later to join them. And a lot of people do this thing that I that I noticed. A lot of people do the thing where they live apart from their parents, but their parents still pay for like their car, their car insurance, their cell phone, and all that shit. Um, mm hmm I was pretty much completely financially cut off from them by the time I was like 17. I lived with my grandma at kind of like a like a senior citizen apartment complex <laughs> or some fucking weird shit. Um, getting listening to all of those people talk and all the gossip and drama and all that shit was fucking hilarious. Being like 60, 70 year olds, they like gossip just like high school. It was insane. But um, but yeah, so I had to get a job pretty early on because I didn't have any help financially from anybody for anything ever. And um, that's crazy, actually. Yeah, I guess looking back on it, it seems kind of crazy. I don't know how I did it, but yeah, it's somehow I did it. So started working at McDonald's because my girlfriend, who had become my wife, was working there. And she was in really good with all those people. And I was able to get a job there. That job was quite the job. Um, I think of all the jobs I've ever worked in, I think I, looking back now, I guess it's not, it's not like an important part of a job. But I respect the people that worked at McDonald's because, because I think McDonald's, I don't know if they still do it, but they were very big on promoting from within. So if you had a supervisor that worked at McDonald's, he was a supervisor because he was the best at that fucking job and could do any job beneath him like instantly. And I picked up a lot of kind of traits from some of those people where like if there was an employee that was like slacking or some shit, the supervisor would show up and do your job for you like 12 times faster than you and make you look like shit in front of everybody else. Like it was never one of those things where some old guy was like, oh, why aren't you moving fast enough? It was usually like, okay, hey, this is too hard for you. You can go back and wash dishes for a minute. And I'll get us through this lunch shift. And you felt like shit doing it because whatever manager or supervisor would step up to work in your place would fucking destroy your job like make you look horrible at it which i always respected sure. it was really good 
Um, can, can I pause right there, actually? Yeah, you bring up it. a great point. Uh, so one thing about that. So, yeah, um, this whole idea of internal escalation with hires uh, mm -hmm. is not to be taken for granted. They seem to making a great point about that because – at McDonald's, they would do that. At Chili's, they did not do that, man. I can't tell you how many fucking dumbass managers I had who were external hires who didn't understand the Chili's culture whatsoever. But again, they would hire them like GameStop did as well because they were they were malleable, they were gullible, and they would they would believe the corporate mantra of like, yeah, yeah, it's always your fault. You can make the numbers happen. You just gotta believe in yourself. When really the the entire system of metrics to measure and track your performance has always been stacked against you. It's mm -hmm. meant to keep you working and doing more for the same fucking pay, dude. It's there. I'm sorry, I sound super anti-capitalist right now. But no, like, it's uh, fine. Yeah, uh, no, it sucks shit. Yeah, like, oh, Nothing my God. Nothing is more dude. embarrassing than having a manager like come up when you're like trying to take an order, and, they, and they're coming up to show you something, and it takes them like 20 minutes to like do anything in the fucking register because you can tell they've never looked at it before. Oh, yeah, dude. But yeah, the, the the most notorious example of that though is the fact that we had a um we had a a a, a Popeyes uh, chicken and biscuits. We had a Popeyes area director become the assistant manager at one of our chilies, and he didn't know how to do anything, dude. Like I've never seen like this is the peak green thumb of of the entirety of ever seeing an upper level management uh employee be so woefully incompetent. It was it was comical, dude. Mm -hmm. you, you think you're right. Popeyes is like what maybe an inventory of like I don't know maybe. 30 ingredients right i don't know flour grease chicken fries biscuits shrimp yeah gg right uh, or sure mashed potatoes gravy whatever like chilies is like a fucking it's a 12 page menu to give you an idea there for context all garden i know all garden's terrible but all garden has a three page menu 12 page menu 75 individual items that they sell with like, with like 100 and fucking 50 Cat, uh, 150 specific ingredient inventory to track and measure with a fucking complex six person kitchen to run. It's like, oh my God, dude, it's so fucking complicated for no fucking reason. So, yeah, like him coming from Popeyes to Chili's, like that, that guy got fucking destroyed, dude. Dude, the staff walked all over him. This guy was completely incompetent. I hated working his shifts, man. I never made any fucking money. We always had walkouts. It was super garbage. I hated it. But anyway, so I'm sorry. Go ahead and continue. The, uh, yeah, no, it's uh, fine. I mean, I'm pretty sure we could sit here and be raging about fucking fast food for uh, for everything having to do with, with retail service. So horrible. Or customer service. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I started working at McDonald's for about a year. That job was... I learned some really good things. I learned some really bad things. There were certain managers that I, I think I probably got influenced by, by a couple of my managers here. Um, I remember the one guy named Sean could work every job like really fucking well. He didn't put up with any shit from employees because he was like the best employee. Like if he, if Sean was stepping in to take your job, it was because he was going to kick your ass at it, which I really respect that he fired people on the spot for being shit employees. Um, that Damn. dude was hard fucking core. Um, like that guy had, oh man, that guy like got in some accident. I think he, I think he was like an army guy, not like a fucking super soldier or some shit, but like, I think he came from the army. That guy got into an accident or some shit and, like burned half his fucking face and came back to work like three months later, like still just as hard as before. That shit was insane. Um, wow. I had another guy that I met, um, who definitely, I learned a lot about the art of not giving a fuck. This was a guy who was born with type one diabetes. So his life was pretty fucked and he was working at McDonald's. And this was before the days of the Affordable Care Act. He got his health insurance through McDonald's so he could never fucking leave his job. Because he had type 1 diabetes, he would never get accepted for health insurance anywhere else. He could never leave that job. And he knew he was slave there for life, and they knew he was slave there for life. This guy, Mike, was the ultimate example of not giving a fuck. Um, I've never met anyone in my life who put up with less shit than this guy did. To give an example, um, we, were, we were working a shift, and... The cops had to pull someone over, and they ended up coming to our parking lot. And Mike was so pissed because they were blocking parts of our drive through and he thought it was fucking his lunch hours up. And he went outside, and he told them that they needed to fucking move while they had this dude pulled over. And, you know, they were like, dude, like, we're in the middle of some shit. Fuck off. Mike came back into the restaurant, and he called 911, and he said that there were people on his property that were blocking his drive through without Damn. telling him that they were fucking cops and called other cops over there to get in a fight down <laughs> to fucking move. I love this dude. This guy is wow. the ultimate guy in not giving a fuck. Uh, I love this guy. He was fucking hilarious. But um, Alpha as fuck, dude. Yeah, pretty much. I had, um, for whatever reason, I don't know why, I was like, um, 
growing up, I was always like a debater, like I want, like I want to argue about everything, blah 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 blah. But I was also insanely fucking chill. And even so, like if you've ever met me in real life or people know me in real life, if you've traveled with me, if you've been to a restaurant, super fucking chill. The food is late, it's okay. Plane doesn't land in time, it's fine. We can figure it out. Like I'm just super chill, just for whatever reason. I don't know why. And this carried over to my work stuff too. And, you know, dealing with shit customers, you know, it's like, it's whatever, dude, I don't give a fuck. Okay, okay. I had a customer interaction where I had some guy standing in line who was screaming at me because he was a breakfast sandwich, wasn't coming fast enough or some shit. This guy is going fucking ballistic, as all customers do. Some 65 year old, giant white beard, fucking piece of shit, screaming because his egg McMuffin <laughs> wasn't done in time. And, um, <laughs> you know, I was like, here you go, here's your food. Like, have a good one, dude. And the next person in line was actually a supervisor at the casino restaurant. And she was like, oh, wow, you know, you handled yourself really well. Like, you should throw in an application. My name is, um, fuck, what was her name? Oh, God, I don't remember. Ooh. She was my um, she was my supervisor. Rachel would remember her fucking name. Joanne, that was her name. Joanne, Joanne was like, go ahead and put in an application or whatever. And, yeah, you could probably get a job at the casino working. Like, I think you could do really well there. And I was like, okay, cool. And, um... I, 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 so I, I went and I put that application in shortly after that, which was really good because like, I wasn't like, I was okay at McDonald's, but I wasn't like part of the in crowd. So I would get a lot of the shit jobs a lot. So like being put on that back drive through in the fucking winter, having uh, to do dishes in fucking winter when that cold breeze is coming in and you're fucking soaking uh, wet and shit. Fuck, soaking wet, yeah, fuck all that shit. Yeah. And, um, yeah. So like, and that job was unbelievable. That was like, I was going from five, I think I was up to five forty-five an hour or something at McDonald's. Um, cause I've got <laughs> yeah. like my 20 cent raise. Cause I was trying to apply to be like a team lead or whatever. Um, yeah. Like, oh yeah. God. Um, I remember those dumbass tests. Did you ever take it? Did you ever do any, like, what are no, like the, they, okay, the five they enemies of me? oil or whatever is like, it's like, Oh God, salt, yeah. air, heat. I don't know. Oh God. Yeah. What were you saying? There was a at a at a brief moment where they uh they they proposed to me the idea that yeah if you if you kick ass if if you learn every position like if you just go from you know flat top the same assembly to cashier to everything else mm -hmm. um you could actually apply you could uh they told me you know when you were well, I was like seventeen I could I actually can can get into a uh, team leader because I was I was showing that much promise mm -hmm. but I was I but I saw the right on the walls so I was like nah dude this looks fucking terrible fuck this place. They offered it. They kind of offered it to me in a nonchalant way, but I, I really didn't want to do it. It wasn't worth it to me. Yeah, I was. Um, I want. I always wanted to like climb the ranks. I guess I don't want to be like a line level employee. So um, yeah, I remember trying to take all the little bullshit tests or whatever to try and test into the team lead shit. But um, yeah, once I got offered that job at the casino, nine dollars an hour. Fuck that shit. I was fucking fuck. out of there. Fuck so, yeah, dude. I started working at the casino, and um, typically, like, if I'm if I'm interested in a thing, this has always just been kind of like a, a trade of mine, I guess. If I'm interested in, like, a thing that I'm doing, I want to learn everything I can about it. So if I've got a phone, if I've got a car, I like to just Google shit and learn everything. And at the casino, it was more or less the same. You know, like, I worked in the front of the house. I was hired as a server. But um, I also, like, I wanted to learn, you know, what do they do in the back of the house? And, you know, what do people out on the floor do? And, you know, over the course of the next probably year, year and a half, um, I got really good at doing pretty much everything in the restaurant. I could cook. I could do prep in the morning. Um, I could run over the bakery and grab shit um i even knew how the cms system worked out on the floor like how people issued comps and whatnot although i couldn't write any myself of course but um but i became pretty familiar with like every part of the job and um you know the manager pam at the time liked me and liked my work initiative and i became one of the only i think i, I might have been the only black badge supervisor slash shift lead at that at the casino at the time um which meant i was um i was like a supervisor dude but i um I, you have black badges at the casino because you can't walk out onto the carpet because you're not 21. <laughs> Right, so, right, right. Yeah, so it's kind of cucky. It was kind of weird because um, I had to be supervised by an adult if I were to walk anywhere because I wasn't old enough to do um, to be on the floor because of the alcohol shit. Alcohol, uh, right? Or, yeah, I think it was alcohol. It was either because of alcohol or gambling. I don't remember, but any, but I wasn't allowed to walk onto the carpet basically. But um, yeah, I, I worked at that job for a while. Um, all the triggering shit that you said about you know everything about restaurants still applies. Um, I I played. Um, there were a couple of key moments where I, I started to realize. Well, I, so I had very much believed that the world was like a meritocracy. If you do well, you'll succeed. I actually was naive, and I believe this even up through most of my streaming <laughs> career. Um, but as long as you do really well, you'll always succeed, and you know that re you'll be rewarded and all that shit. And I figured, mm -hmm. like, I was the—I think I was one of the best employees at that place. I could do front of house or back of house at a speed at, that anybody like. I could work that register faster than anybody. I knew all the secret fucking tricks and the second menu and shit to add stuff to that shit. Um, I could cook. I remember that when I became a supervisor, one of like the, um, I was one of the best people to run the window because no fucking cook would talk back to me. Because because they couldn't get away with any fucking shit. Um, and because I knew every fucking trick in that kitchen. So, like, for mm. instance, like, sometimes cooks, you know, like, I might ask for something, like, hey, like, I, you know, 
I would only be one time I would have to do this with like a with like a with a set of employees before they would fuck off. Where you might say something like, "Hey, listen, on this order that's coming through, she wants those ex hash browns extra crispy, right?" I remember one time the Rudy, the guy leading the line, was like, oh, "Extra crispy hash browns? That's gonna be at least thirty minutes." And I was like, "Okay, never mind. Don't worry about it. I'll take care of it." Okay, and and you know you can go back to the kitchen. Here's here's a mm -hmm. fucking meme trick if you're cooking hash browns. A lot of times you've got weights that you put on um, like burgers and shit on the grill if you want to cook right, a little right, bit faster, right. get them well done. Yep, yeah, you take a normal order of hash browns you cut that shit in half and then you weight both sides of it on the fucking flat top you can get those shit extra crispy in five fucking minutes right but i would only have to do shit like that like a couple times or i would go back and cook something if i felt like they were taking too long on it and then they would never do it again because they knew that if they talked back to me when i asked for something if it was possible i was gonna go back and do it and i was like i was a real fucking small guy at the time i was like 105 pounds literally five seven five eight so like it all it's like nobody wanted me to go back there and show them because everybody would make fun of like the cook they would talk back but um yeah, like I, yeah, doing shit like that was was a lot of fun. I felt like um, people got sick of me pretty quickly, but I was like, I felt like I was like, it was fun to be like the hard ass guy because I took all my shit from McDonald's and whatnot. Um, you know, customers that would come up and ask for refunds on their food, and then they would be shocked when I would throw their fucking food away because I would never fucking refund a customer. If a customer came up to me with three fourths of their plate left and they'd ask for a refund, and then they thought they were gonna keep their food and eat it afterwards. Fuck that shit. I was throwing that shit away oh, every fucking time. Dude, I you're would walk in hell alpha. yeah. Guy would come up and be like, hey, like blah blah blah, this was really bad. I was like, oh I'm sorry, yeah, I'll refund you and then I'll refund the money. And I would walk back. And then you'd have to do it right when they do it, because you know they're walking back to eat. I would walk back very quickly, right with them, take their plate off the table, fucking trash it right in front of them in the fucking bus cart. And I had a, more than one customer be like, oh wait, what are you doing? I was like, oh I'm throwing it away because I refunded you. I can't let you eat the food. Oh shit. That felt so good. So people so many people mm, are so fucking mm, mad at that shit. Mm, mm. Hell yeah. Um, dude. Hang on, pause right there. Okay, listen. Yeah. The the here's what the thing about it, right? When it comes to corporations like fucking entities and everything, with Chili's particularly here, if a customer complains, you you can't do that. I can't pull that card, dude. Th there are people who would just like, I I they would complain in, to such an unreasonable degree that mm -hmm. I, I I was not getting tipped because I can tell the kind of people they were in the first place. Um, you would have to like you'd have to bend over and give them a fucking rim job in 4D through a time warp portal. Like go back yeah. in time and give them a rim job from last week or whatever, dude. Because like you they you give her the food, you give them a new plate, it's already free, you're not gonna tip me, and you walk out with no tip. It's mm -hmm. like, dude, what the and the problem is like if they complain to corporate at all, you automatically lose. Yep. You the one you lose, you manager on the shift lose, everyone loses because they complain. And, it's and like, the worst part is your the your manager on the shift will have the customers back throughout that entire fucking fight. I'd always oh I'd always bring this up as an example. Is like at least if you're a fucking prostitute, if a customer is fucking with you, the pimp is gonna come over and beat the shit out of the customer. <laughs> but when you work in retail, your manager will come over and fuck you with the customer. You have less respect than than like a like a pimp would give a fucking prostitute that shit was fucked up dude yeah fuck that noise oh god dude it was it was, it was actually exhausting man it, it fucking sucked dude and there was another point here too about where they uh to climb to keep your shifts there was a point where the cor corporate demanded like that we have our our survey hits be good and it's like dude surveys are so antiquated no one like people if you do a good job as a waiter you're going to most likely tip the waiter at that point like asking them to do the survey in addition to the obvious monetary appreciation of the tip is like is too much. No mm -hmm. one's gonna fucking. I have to like. I have to beg them. I have. To, it's like and, I'm, and my begging. I feel like is 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 like backfiring on the tip I'm getting because they're gonna tip me less because I'm I'm coming off as annoying and asking for too many calls to actions at one time. One of the um, worst. So I, one of the worst parts, speaking to that like survey shit, one of the worst parts of the supervisor job is when you have to go back in the office and go through the fucking call-ins and the book to call people back and find out, well, what was your complaint? What can we do to make oh it right? Oh, my God, oh, dude. Oh, God. And it was always, a, I walked out with a cheesecake, and when I got home, the top of it was all messed up because it was packaged in the box too tightly. I'd really like seven more slices for free. Oh, my God. I just want to fucking kill myself talking to these fucking people. Dude, it was, it was the worst, man. Like... Hang on, pause here, because like, the other thing we're not bringing up right now when it comes to the restaurant is to mm -hmm. go. So as the biggest downfall, I'm sorry, can I, can I cast it and rant about Chili's restaurant? Yeah, fucking do it. Hell yeah. Okay, okay, listen. All right, boys. So when it comes to the Chili's, all right, so I told you before, there's, like, there's it's a 12-page menu. It's 150, um, 150 ingredient um, inventory that's completely nonsense. It's like double the complexity of McDonald's, but the cooks are paid the fucking same. Mm -hmm. You would think a Chili's cook is going to make like, you know, minimum 12 an hour. Not fucking true. I have no clue who the fuck want to work there, but the cook's there. And as of 2014, we're getting paid $8.50 an hour, which is 
fucking depressing as shit, by the way. But holy fuck, mm -hmm. um, in the kitchen you had um, you had uh, several stations. You had um, you had flat top grill, fry side, salad nacho, and then dessert slash prep. Mm -hmm. Those stations, right? The problem though that that is a six person station that requires is it six? My my five or whatever it is five or six person station that requires that many amounts of people. And because of the dying uh, antiquated model of casual dining or whatever it may be, right? Um, um, the, the we were we were losing sales time and time again as as time moved on, and so the the corporate modules would update and say that okay, look, your store is only a thirty thousand dollar a day store, therefore you only get three cooks per night, two in the morning or two in the uh, the a.m. shift. And you get, you know, you only get uh, two managers per day rather than having three or four a day. Mm -hmm. So you got someone who opens who's there, you know, from fucking 8 a.m. until 3 p.m. And then you got the manager too who comes in at like 2.30 who's there from 2.30 until midnight. It's actually crazy, dude. Like you are like you might as well get a, a, a chain ball and tether and whip because you are not leaving that restaurant, dude. I I to me, some of the most depressed people I've ever met in my fucking life are, are Chili's managers, man. It is actually insane how long they are stuck there every fucking day. Chili's is only closed on Thanksgiving Day and mm -hmm. Christmas Day, and that's it. And we used to be closed early on Christmas on, on, on New Year's Eve, not anymore. Open until the ball's dropping, you're at work. Fuck you, dude. Oh, my God. It's so insane. The one well, thing I'm jealous of okay. is at least you guys got to fucking close. Doing that shit at a 24-hour restaurant was shit because sometimes you would never uh. know when it was going to fucking end. I can't, like, they all, there were every, I think it was, like, the first Sunday of, like, every week we would close the kitchen to do deep cleaning because you would have to um, tear down the tops of all the grills to clean mm -hmm. out all the shit and everything and then deep clean everything in the back in front of house. And those we days, that yeah. Those days when I could look forward to actually closing the kitchen at two o'clock to get some reprieve was so fucking satisfying. It's like, listen, I'm done taking orders, motherfuckers. If you want a cheesecake, you can order that. Otherwise, sit the fuck down. Oh, my God. It felt so good to be able to close. Being stuck at a restaurant, though, I, and I imagine, I guess it's kind of similar. If you come in for a swing shift at like two o'clock, if you don't close till 12, like it sucks because the way that corporate always has it is like it's so masterfully done it's kind of like in our in, in the normal economy when like bezos makes like billions and billions of dollars but republicans cry like immigrants were stealing all the money somehow even though they make nothing right. like it's it's the same way at corporate work environments too where it's like the real problem is you're not scheduling enough people but it ends up where the employee is the one that feels like shit because when 10 o'clock rolls around and it's time for them to go home and you see the restaurant is swamped you feel bad because you're leaving all of your fellow employees to get fucked and like nothing feels worse or at least to me nothing feels worse until like you clock out and you like look back at like the fucking war zone and the bodies strewn oh, across the, the battlefield. Yeah, yeah, and you're yeah, like, yeah. Sorry guys, you know I'll see you later. And you walk out knowing that all of those people are fucked for the next like few hours, and they're here <laughs> just like see ya. Oh man. Oh yeah. no, yeah, that was you were decent to that man. That that was the doggy dog world at that point. Yeah, they did it all the time, dude. Mm -hmm. They they were out, dude. The minute two thirty hit. Out, out the door, dude. Like, yeah. fuck you. I'm, I'm, I'm gone. I'm. I gone. hit that point well, halfway through my career where, like, um, I would, I was the kind of guy that would always come in if they'd call you and shit. Like, hey, can you come in early? And, and I worked fucking night shift and went to college. You know, how annoying it is getting a call at fucking six p.m. in the middle of my in the, the few precious hours of uninterrupted sleep. I get to sleep. I get a call at six p.m. to come in fucking two hours early. And I was always the guy. I was like, yeah, I'll do it. Oh yeah, I'd love to come in. Yeah. I mean, the overtime was great because by that point I was getting fifteen an hour, so the overtime was like twenty two fifty an hour, which was insane for me. But um, but at some right, point it got right. to the point where I realized the trick was like you know they'd call me and I'd be like oh, hello and like oh this is Pam can you come in like oh sorry man I'm like I'm really wasted right now I'm really drunk otherwise I would but I'll be sober <laughs> for my shift sorry I'll see you at ten like boom, like hang up every time like fuck it yeah fuck that shit all right, anyway, all right. about that okay so getting calls on your day off mm -hmm. dude it got to the point where I legit didn't answer my phone it was an unknown number oh like, yeah. Back like, oh, dude, they would they would blow me up, dude. It was so fucking aggravating because I was one of the reliable ones that always would call me in. Hey, my sister's uncle's baby's having a child. Can you can you cover my shift? No, bitch, because if I wanted a fucking day off, none of y'all fucks would feel for me, okay? Like, I already know how this fucking game works. So it was one time, one time I wanted to go do something really cool with a, with a friend or whatever, and I and I no one offered, no one took up my shift. It was a it was a Gucci Saturday night shift in the lounge. No one picked it up, and I'm like, dude, fuck y'all, really, dude. And I learned that you had I had to literally throw out 20 bucks at the offer money for people to come pick up my shift, which is standard now. I totally get that now. But it was like I have I have picked up shifts in the past for free at the goodwill of my heart. And none of y'all fucks, none of the ones like Lauren or or, 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 or Peggy, none of y'all fucks are going to pick up my shift. Fuck y'all, dude.
I had, oh, dude, oh, I had employees that would call out that, dude. that were fucking shameless about their excuses. I had a girl call uh. in one day, and um, I, I, I feel bad saying this because I don't know like if this is true, but I had a girl that called out like three or four times in a year because she fucking miscarried. She would like call and be like, "Oh, I'm sorry, I had a miscarriage this morning. I'm not gonna be honest. Like the fuck." And it was, and I know her. And it was like the <laughs> she was like the supervisor slash lead for the next shift. So if she fucking calls out. I'm gonna be there for four more fucking hours until Pam rolls her fucking lazy ass in because she's not gonna be there until fucking eleven o'clock. <laughs> fuck me. But like she would always be in, like the next day. I was like, "Oh wow, like you passed that feed is pretty quick. Like congratulations, I guess. Like yeah, she did this shit like three or four times a year. This shit drove me crazy." Um. Well, so what happened though is I would answer the phone, mm -hmm. and then to ex put extra tilt there, I um so I bought I bought an iPhone um on in year one I bought an iPhone in two thousand seven, mm -hmm. and so this was back when you know when they were expensive for their time, and uh, I felt like I had you know the biggest dick in the world because I had an iPhone in the world of like Motorola Qs and um and Palm trios and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. those first so, iPhones that was some serious street cred, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I was I was powerball. I was like, yeah, I'm ready for this shit, dude. Let's fucking go. Because I was because in my head I thought, you know, I can get uh, I can get a Motorola Q and an iPod Nano, mm -hmm. or I could just get the iPhone and combine them both, right? That was that was that was my my thought process behind it. Um, so when I got the iPhone, um, my voicemail. All right, this is the same year where that song b -b -b ballin', no lie, no lie, you that that song, right? So the the, the year that song came out. I made my my voicemail so fucking obnoxious, and I did it just for the purpose of pissing off Chili's managers who were calling me to come in on my day off. <laughs> I was like, "Hey, you reach you reach my iPhone, b -b 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 ball in." That's why I said iPhone ball in. Hey, hit me up, bro. What's up? Like I made it so extra obnoxious that they they got so fucking pissed off they wouldn't call me anymore, dude. Yeah. So uh, that was my voicemail for like for the entire time I was at Chili's. Dude. I mean, and because like the longer the, the longer the years pass by, the more cringe that voicemail became because it's like I'm I'm bragging about having an iPhone. Like and it became less brag worthy over time. So yeah, yeah. it just like yeah, I, I I just did it to troll the fuck out of the customer or out of the uh, out of the the managers who would call me in. Nice. So oh yeah, dude, it was super exhausting. But back to the uh, thing here about the uh, the thing here. So there was a it was a five or six person uh, station that would only get three at night and two in the morning with only two managers rather than the four it should be to run the entire thing. Because mm -hmm. think about it, right? You're, you're you're cutting your margin so thin on labor that like, mind you, you you assign three managers, but whenever you have an incompetent hiring manager who hires people who don't have cars, who don't have reliable rides, and do this no no call no show bullshit four times a fucking week. You know, you're running a three-man shift. Now you're only running two cooks. Mm -hmm. You have two cooks for a six-person station. Do the math there. Your manager's, he's, he's, your manager's not managing now. Your manager's in the back kitchen cooking with, the, with other cooks now. Every fucking time, dude. There's no QA. There's no quality assurance. There's no nothing, dude. Like, and Well, that was like the... That's what you would do with your salaried employees. Those were your people when you, when it comes time to scheduling. Those are your people that saved you on your hourly labor because a lot of the times their wages aren't even calculated or factored into your like your labor numbers for the hour. Like if you could throw a fucking salary dude on some station, a supervisor, and not bring in an hourly employee, you better fucking believe your store manager or whatever is going to do that shit because they save fucking money yeah. and they just fuck the salaried people in the ass. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was super exhausting. So yeah, that um, time and time again, that was always the case. And then finally, the uh, to go to go was the shit show because like there was like the shared responsibility to answer the phone when somebody called. But mm -hmm. of course, you know the problem is no, you're you're four to six tables deep right now. Fuck the phone. The phone is a potential problem. I have actual problems waiting at tables right now, dude. Like fuck the phone, dude. So it was always like this passive aggressive. Answer the phone. Ring, ring, ring. Answer the phone. And like. <laughs> Dude, you hear the manager like yelling at everyone in the front of the, front of the house to answer the phone. You can hear you can hear them yelling through the front of house, so you have customers hearing the phone ring and you hear the manager yelling at them to answer the phone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> dude, it was fucking terrible, dude. So to go, no one gave a fuck at all, and uh, of course, um, to go was this annoying thing because to go was just slow enough that you would cut to go at like one o'clock. So between one p.m. and three thirty before night shift begins. To go was like the um the morning uh the morning head server's responsibility, and it's like, okay, so I get that. Okay, so I have to you know I have my like ten to twelve table state uh, section. Sure, mm -hmm. I can handle that. No problem. I'm a, I'm a beast. I got that. But then like I have to answer to go phones, take to go orders, and uh and deliver them to the tables or deliver them to the cars on the outside. Right. The problem is these cooks, man, don't fucking do shit, man. Fuck. 
you order a margarita grilled chicken that comes with that, that comes with the, the grilled chicken, the margarita marinade, the pico de gallo, rice and black beans. You know what I get? I get a fucking old dry sandbagged ass chicken breast, no marinade, no pico, no black beans, no rice. And I have to sit here and, and dick ride them for fucking anything. Hey, yo, bro, where, where's the shit at? Oh, my bad, man. It's going to be five minutes. They're already here. The ticket's at 25 fucking minutes, dude. Like, where the fuck are you? Where's the cheesecake at? Where's the Wait, camera? Was, where's the, was camera the problem top? just like scheduling orders ahead of time that they weren't able to plan for it or? No, the problem is the cooks are on a reliable piece of shit that would never fucking do the order correctly. Yeah. I have to like, dude, like, um, oh my God, they, they would just, they would, they would pre-bump. Like I said before, back to the McDonald's topic earlier here. They would, um, like they would, they would make only the core component and they would never give you the sides. So if you order a burger, you have to call for fries and I would never get the fries whenever they was supposed to be properly. Wait, pre-bump at fucking Chili's? Oh yeah, dude. Wait, you didn't have All like the... did you not have physical tickets? No, it was computer. Um, oh fuck. Yeah, that it shit. was all yeah, it was all computer, bro. It was garbage, man. I would never, ever, <sighs> ever trust pre bumping on like a real restaurant like that. I would kill myself. <laughs> we had physical tickets on I, every I, fucking I, order. I, that shit hung in the window and you saw what you needed on every order. Fuck that. That sounds like mm. a nightmare on running a dinner shift. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, man, it was it was terrible, dude. They uh, but yeah, every order, whether it be um a sandwich, you would never get the fries until you until you called for it. Um, even though again, they're supposed to like literally package it ready to sell and mm -hmm. be ready to go, but they, never the case, dude. Like, oh my god, it was so frustrating. You would never get anything needed here. So you have you have your tables waiting on shit. You have to go outside with, with like a three car pileup waiting on shit. None of the go to go shit's ready. None of it's organized. You have you don't have what you need. Everything's getting pre bumped. Manager in the back of the kitchen, nowhere in the front to help you out whatsoever. Phones ring in, and it's just like, uh, also, by the way, the host, they would cut the host too. So we would cut host, we would cut to go, we would cut, we had cooks cut. It was like there was no fucking labor, dude. So you got people in the front waiting to get sat, customers waiting to get uh, served, to go waiting to get shit done. And it's like, you have to figure out which problem is the most, which forest fire is the most important to take out first because you only have like a little, like, Weenie Hut Jr. Fucking little, um, I don't know, rocket nozzle compared to having like a, a fire hydrant to, to blow shit out with. Mm -hmm. Dude, it was it was super stressful. It was super exhausting. And then the last part about this here too, it's a little bit of a minor tangent as well. But like, I can't tell you how often I would get a table. Let's say it's a it's a family, right? It could be like a you know husband, wife, and a kid. Mm -hmm. Husband orders a ribeye, medium rare, beautiful. Uh, wife orders the um, I don't know, the quesadilla explosion salad, which is like you know a little, it looks like a it's a it's a it's a it's a grilled chicken salad covered in a citrus bals in a citrus balsamic vinegar red comes with four cheese quesadilla wedges on the corners here. So it requires a combination of effort done from you need grill to make the chicken and you need salad nacho to make the salad, make the dressing, and then cook four cheese quesadilla wedges to put on the corners of the salad. And then finally, the little kid orders a grilled cheese. So you order those three things, right? And the problem is. Um, typically your flat top slash grill cook is the one that's the most paid because he's like the one you, he's like, he's, he's cooking your most, your most expensive inventory. And in my know, experience, ribeyes. those are usually the guys like leading the kitchen too. They're usually the ones like calling out and putting together orders and whatnot and making sure tickets are being sold on time, at least at the kitchen of the casino. Yeah? Right, right, right. Yeah. They're, they're very, very, they're, they're the most competent and the most uh, dependable because mm -hmm. they're cooking in this case, the most expensive inventory, which would include ribeyes and, and, ri and, and ribs. So um, the ribeye comes out beautiful, medium rare, butter on top, you know, cheese melted on the potatoes, got the chives on there. The, the corn of cobs actually buttered and seasoned. I can't tell you how often I get served fucking old dry ass corn of cob with no butter on. I'm like, dude, th think about the fact, think about would you eat this corn? It's fucking dry as shit, dude. You gotta at least butter the fucking shit, man. Fuck, mm -hmm. dude, fuck. So the ribeye comes out fantastic. Comes out, you know, 14 minutes flat, A1, love it. Then um, I'm waiting on the salad, nowhere to be found. And worse yet, I get the salad and I get the um, I get the salad and I get the uh, the ribeye and I have this the kids meal the most important one because I can't have the adults eating and the kids sitting here looking at uh, dad starving and whatnot. I actually prefer to have the kids meal at ASAP to be totally honest. Um, the kids meal is nowhere to be found and it's like, uh, you know, and usually the the grilled cheese is responsible of the of the uh, of the um the flat top guy or the, or the the fry side guy, and uh, the problem is here's the problem right. Um, the, the 12 page Chili's menu, half the menu is fried food. So every fucking night, the fry, the fry side gets super slammed, dude. Mm -hmm. Ever, it never fails, dude. This, this, this kitchen is so incompetently like, um, structured because it's, 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 it's doomed to fail, dude. When half the menu is fried food, but only a fifth of the kitchen is actually going to prepare fried food. That should tell you a lot about how stupid this whole operation is actually. And, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for the grilled cheese and they're like, I don't have it, bro. I don't, I'm, uh, pfft. 
I don't even know where it's at, bro. And I'm like, oh, y'all are killing me. y'all. So I'm sitting here having a ribeye getting cooked from medium rare to medium well sitting in the window dying over a heat lamp. Mm -hmm. I, have a, I have a salad sitting here, you know, getting soggy because it's, it's fucking salad. And I have no grilled cheese. I'm just sitting here like, oh, fuck, dude. Just can I just for once have things even go somewhat correct? It, it never failed, dude. Every fucking night was another. Now I got to go out there and fucking do the do the little do the monkey dance because, hey, I'm sorry that it's been 25 minutes and your food's not here yet. Oh, I'm sorry that I know I know he ordered a grilled cheese that shouldn't take 25 minutes, but my fucking kitchen's garbage, dude. Ah. Do you ever have the customers that um the customers that would come up and they would order you'd get like some guy would come up and he'd be like hey I want a steak like extra ultra super well done and then the guy behind him would come up like hey could I just get like a ham and turkey sandwich you're like sure and uh, there are certain things in in food that like PTSD me um one of these things is when you're working at a fast food restaurant and you just finished with a line of cars and you go right up to the front to start cleaning a table and you see that one fucking car pull in to the to the in the front and you're like this motherfucker and you watch him and your eyes are on him the whole fucking mm. time and this guy drives like oh my fucking god because you would like just finish dealing with a lot of customers and now you finally get to fucking clean something and you see this one solitary fucking car pull in and you're like this fucking piece of shit and then you hear mm -hmm. that goddamn eep, that little beep in your in your headset to let you know that he's at the fucking drive it's like god fucking damn it um another one of those big trigger moments for me is when um Somebody comes up, orders a, orders an item that's going to take some time to prepare, right? 10, 15, 20 minutes to prepare. And then someone else after them orders some shit that's like a two to three minute thing. And if your kitchen's running quick, you get club sandwiches out in a couple minutes. Um, you know, French fries, right. I think we're in the fryer for like, I want to say two minutes is how long you drop fries to this place. Then you pull them out. Is when you watch, when you're sitting at the window and you watch a, a, one of your food runners take the food and they're running it out and you see that goddamn customer sitting at his fucking table giving them a death glare because somebody that ordered after them is getting their food first. And, the, and you see it and you know it and your heart rate and you, is elevating because you know this stupid motherfucker is about to get up and come complain. And you watch the and you watch him and they always make a show out of it too. It's never just like, it's never just like, it's like this. It's like, where they, they're like witnessing some like unbelievable fucking event. And they're like looking, they're peering on the corner. Like, is that mother, is that customer really getting his fucking food before me? I ordered fucking food. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> and they're like, they're not saying it, but you could you can see the rage in their face. And then they stand mm. up and you're like, oh God. <sighs> it's gonna be the it's gonna be the twenty-fifth time this fucking week. I have to explain to some dumb motherfucker why a goddamn grilled chicken sandwich takes longer to make than a fucking ham sandwich. And then he walks up and he's like um, I just had a question. And it's like, mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I noticed that I ordered before that customer, and he got his food before me. And it's like, oh my god, dude, dealing with some of these people is fucking impossible. Well, I'm, I'm sorry you wanted raw chicken because chicken takes minimum yeah. six minutes. Look, oh I, I don't... god, these fucking people were impossible to deal with. Come I on, fucking dude, hated. I fucking hated these people. <sighs> It, 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 it's crazy yeah the, I've, I've had it before i've had like the the verbatim the final stage bro it's like i want i want a ribeye i want a steak i want a steak i want to cook well done but i don't want it burnt i want the butter on it i want extra cheese i want extra bacon i want extra of that i want more of that butter on the on the on the potato too mm -hmm. um i want uh y'all y'all gave me y'all gave me one bread last time but i want two breads this time and it's like oh, dude, fuck. And, and the problem is bread's one of those things where you have to like uh you have to like I can't ring in an extra bread. It's like a complimentary item that comes with the ribeye mm -hmm. or certain pastas. And it's like, I have to manually call for more bread, which is like, it puts me in that position, right? This is the, the power play. This is where the, the, cooks, the cooks are all like, did you ring that in? Did you ring that in? Motherfucker, I can't ring in bread, bitch. Okay, look, I wish, listen, for a second here, I wish I didn't have to call on your fucking dumb old saggy titty ass, Miss Edna. I don't fucking care. I wish I don't have to call for anything from you, okay? Look, this stuff comes up my fucking ass with the fucking bread. If I didn't have to ask for it, I wouldn't fucking call for you, okay? I cannot stand giving you a power play, okay? I Yes, I can't bring the fucking shit in, all right? Can you just, for once, not backsass me and just give me what the fuck I need? How long have I been here now? I've been working here for three fucking years. Can you find out comprehend here that I only asked you when I absolutely fucking need it? I'm not... I'm not Stephanie, okay? Holy fuck, she's a dumbass. I get that, okay? I'm just here asking for bread because I have to give this guy bread. I can't get around it, all right? I Please, fucking just once. I'm so happy, dude. Fuck. When I when I became like the supervisor for the ship, it felt so fucking good 
to have a to have because it, it didn't happen that much. But when I was when I was a server, it happened a lot more because I listened to other people do it. Um, but when I became a supervisor, when I would ask for shit, I was like, "Hey, listen, I need this thing." Like, and, and again, it only happened one time where some cook would say, like, "Oh, well, we can't do that or whatever," and I'd be like, "I need this, or I'm gonna come back and do it for you." Like, and then and then everybody would be like real quiet for like a few minutes or whatever because it was kind of awkward because you know I was mad as fuck. I fucking love that shit. Um, yeah, fuck. I, if I couldn't cook, I don't know what I would do. De dealing with the back of house, well, because like I think a lot of those guys, I say those guys, but I think a lot of people in food service, I think a lot of it runs on respect too, and it's hard to take orders from somebody when you feel like they can't do shit or they don't know anything about what's going on. So um, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, like I was really friendly. I, you know, I put it this way, but I, at the end of the day, I was super friendly with all the cook dudes. Like we all loved each other. Like there was a couple guys that I, Randy and shit. I remember going to his house and playing Halo a bunch of shit. Um, well, if we're gonna talk about alliances now, actually, there was a point where I, I, I created the corrupt alliance. I created the internal mafia at Chili's. Like uh -huh. I was like, look, bro, I got a guy here. He's gonna probably be fat. Look, I'll give you a five. You get my shit out before anyone else's. We cool. Yeah. And I, I threw him that five. Uh, the cook's name was D Rob. He was a <laughs> D Rob was the entire package man. This man was like six. I don't even know, like six, seven, tall, lanky, like a uh, wannabe rapper, had a SoundCloud and everything. I mm -hmm. kid you not, actually had a SoundCloud back when SoundCloud was like young, young in its uh, inception. Um, and like D Rob was like, "Yo, you got, shit, you got money, fuck, I get shit out, man." I never seen this. This man was, was so the most ugly ass salmon. And then I, I saw him a five, and bro, I'm getting fucking banger salmon, dude. I mean, fucking lemon squeezed, peppered on top, immaculate. Looks like actually matches the menu picture. I'm like. This guy fucking has it, dude. They just don't fucking pay him enough for this shit, dude. That's yeah. crazy. I remember, oh my um, God, dude. I had like, yeah, the 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 um, the um, I you know what? I had, I'll call it an empire. Okay, I had known, <laughs> I knew so many different parts about all the casino jobs that I had like a network of people that I got up my like it was like you scratch my back and I'll scratch yours. So one of the things at the casino that everybody fucking hated was um, cocktail servers would oftentimes come to the casino and they would place orders. Um, they would place to go orders for other people. Now we technically kind of weren't allowed to do this. Now if they brought money and paid for it, it was okay. But the reason why people hated the cocktail servers is because usually what would happen is they would place an order, we'd give them a pager and they would come back like an hour later. They were always fucking late for our food. And so people started to disrespect their orders or they would put it in. Sometimes they wouldn't get made right away. Like there's just a lot of shit. Like there was a lot of animosity. Um, well, what I found out, firstly, a lot of these girls were cute as fuck, okay? They just sucked at doing the order shit. But what I found out, fucking one day, some shit happened or whatever, where the server came into place and order, and what I found out was, was that this chick would do some special shit for her customers, where she would go to the Diamond Lounge, and she would get chocolate fucking milkshakes for these guys. And I was like, and I saw her walk in one time with that, and I was like, what the fuck is that? Um, and her uh, her name was Heather, and she was like, oh, like this is a, you know, I got a chocolate milkshake for you know this guy in the program. I was like, you motherfuckers have chocolate milkshakes? And she was like, yeah, we do. I can bring you one. Um, blah, blah, blah. We used to flirt all the time. And I was like, you can bring me a chocolate milkshake? And she's like, yeah, sure. And um, she brought me a chocolate milkshake that night, and that became like that was my shit. When I got that chocolate milkshake, that was the only thing I had to look forward to that shitty ass job. So what would happen was the servers would come in and they would place orders and because the back of the house and everybody hated dealing with the servers and everything, but I could do everything. I would take the order for them. I would ring in the ticket. I would like do it like zero, 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 like Steven order. And I would go back and I would cook it all myself. And then I usually, I knew like so many of the customers at this place. Cause I was very, I was super customer facing. I talked to everybody. All the old people fucking love me. I knew all the poker players. Cause I played poker and we would talk about our, that, you know, they would rant to me about their aces getting cracked or some shit. So I would take their order. I would go back and cook it. And then I would usually deliver it to the guy. If I knew who they were, if it was a poker player, somebody playing slots, if I knew where they were, I would do all this shit. And they would bring me fucking chocolate milkshakes all night long. And it was like the my favorite part of working at the casino was this like back alley fucking shit going on where the servers would come in, place orders. I'd cook it, take it out, and I'd get fucking milkshakes. I love that shit. That was my shit right there, okay? It was the only thing I had to look forward to. Had that godforsaken fucking hellhole was my fucking chocolate milkshakes. Yeah, you're 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 one you're one out. Well, actually, I'm sorry. I, I derailed it to hardcore because actually you were still telling me how you got to. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, I, we, we went on a restaurant we're, for we're like there. 20 minutes um, there. Holy shit. Oh, and then another real... This is like a real quick meeting that I just got reminded uh, yeah, of. Yeah, go, go, did go, you ever go, play go, Halo go. 2? Oh, yeah. Dude, I... I I actually didn't bring up here anything about the gaming I did back then, uh -huh. but yeah, I was into I was very much into Halo Two, and I wanted to get into competitive Halo Three, but my internet where I lived out in the rural country oh, shit. Um, was too shit. Yeah, I literally couldn't play online. I was always the guy of the one bar signal, mm -hmm. like one out of five bars. I was always the guy of the one bar, no matter what I did, because my internet was like zero point five down, just garbage, and zero point zero one up, literally, literally. By the way, um, so yeah, I could never I couldn't play Halo Three online, no matter what I did. So I had to like mm -hmm. give up and move on to speed running. You Actually. had um Halo Two was the first one that introduced like the laser sword, right? 
yeah, correct. Yeah. Positive it was, right? Yeah. I remember yeah, the, uh, add the add the homing glitch on it. You can yep. take the rocket launcher, lock on, swap to the sword, and flung halfway across the map. It was super lit. I remember one of the most awkward moments of my life was I went um one of the cooks in the back, his name was Randy. I used to we actually found out that we lived in like the same like apartment complex. I went over to this guy's house and played uh and we would play Halo sometimes. He had a friend come over once and like um you know I I talk shit a lot and cause I played games and blah blah blah. I was like oh really? I had this guy come over and it was the most awkward fucking gameplay in my entire life because this guy got so fucking mad i had these like ultra bitch strategies on some maps that would piss some, <laughs> like for randy it was just funny for him but this guy legitimately like, i thought he was actually gonna hurt me like i got like scared being at this guy's house i don't remember anything about this game but i remember there was some map on halo 2 i think you were like inside a spaceship and you could go outside and like jump off the map but there were these like energy shields that separated like from being like in in a part of an area and what i would do is i would always camp the other side of like the entrance with the fucking laser sword so the guy couldn't shoot you but as soon as he would come through <laughs> i would fucking laser you, you, you would mail, mail him with <laughs> it, yeah and i killed this guy like fucking 10 times in a row doing this we were playing like first to 20 first to 30 or whatever and he would get so fucking mad at like how irritated he was like this is how you're gonna play this is how you do this shit i thought you were supposed to be fucking good why do you do this dumb shit like this is some fucking bullshit and he would get so fucking mad playing i only played this guy one time and i thought he was gonna fucking kill me holy shit it was so fucking funny um oh my god yeah anyway um i was one of those people maybe yeah um i worked at the casino for a while um oh i quickly discovered the we were talking about like the meritocracy thing um mm -hmm. where like i thought that it, i thought it was like uh if, if you worked hard and you worked well like you were i i figured that like i was invincible at the casino there was no way i would ever get fired from that job i knew everybody at every position i knew so many different parts of the of the job i could do front of house i could do back of the house and i could do everything really well i was one of the fastest cooks i was one of the fastest order takers like at the front like my customer service skills i was fucking i had that shit on fucking lock and um what happened was um something happened one day where there was a we, we had like a soda machine we had a fruit fry a fruit fly problem underneath the soda machine you know those things always get like sticky and gross or whatever you have to clean them yeah out yeah the fucking for sure. time. yeah there was pause there, by the way mm -hmm. just so y'all know i feel like some of y'all think that the soda dispensaries uh you know the coke the coke machine mm -hmm. um they're all like really gross i think it's actually to be really well maintained by mm -hmm. fast food restaurants because they change so frequently because like you know the you know it's a co2 dispensary tethered to like a you know a, a, a syrup bag beneath here so you know the sprite's a giant bag of like sprite syrup that goes into the co2 carbonated water and then makes sprite for you right there in the machine that's why it tastes better than than bottled soda mm -hmm. these are maintained really well at at fast food restaurants because they are they have to be changed so frequently because people are getting soda all day long yeah at restaurants it is the wild wild west these things are not very well maintained there they get dusty they get dirty they are they are gross man yeah we continue on um, yeah, and, and ours we had for some reason there was like a fruit fly problem underneath, and I remember we I cleaned this out like fucking I feel like like every day for like a week, and there were still fruit flies. And um, one day when I was fucking Mary fucking called out, and I was stuck there for until Pam the manager got in to take over the shift um, because I couldn't leave because I was the only one that could run the shift. Um, when she came in, she um, she noticed it and she was like, Stephen, um, you know, what's going on? Why is this blah, blah, blah? And I'm like, listen, like I've cleaned this out a ton. I've emailed around other supervisors like I can't. This shit is not getting done. Like, I don't know what the fuck to do. And she's like, listen to me, Stephen, if something bad ever happens to you and um, you're not getting the answers that you need, you need to take an initiative. You need to be a leader because I see a leader in you. That's why you're one of the youngest supervisors, blah, blah, blah. You need to take initiative and you need to email the next person up and you need to get the work done. And I was like, damn, Pam, you're right. I feel inspired, thank you. That's, I'll do that next time, thank you. And um, you know, some months down the road, um, so I worked something called night shift, which is the fucking devil's shift, which nobody gives a fuck about because in a normal restaurant, all of your important VPs, all of everybody, um, you know, your big managers, your big owners, they're all there during the day shift. So if you've ever worked at a restaurant, day shift is where you go if you want to make easy money because all the old people tip like crazy and you don't have to do any real fucking work because everything's stocked from the night before and you don't get any big rushes. Swing shift right. is where the, that's where your day shift is where your spoiled lazy workers are that are friends with everybody. Swing shift is where all of your best workers are because you can't can't survive a busy fucking swing shift without your best fucking workers you need your you need your sickest people there and the money is still good but you have to work really hard for it and then grave shift 
is where businesses try to save as much money as possible. You bare bones the fuck out of your crew. This is why anytime you drive to a McDonald's at 2 a.m. right after the bar is let out, there's a line out the fucking ass, out the out the, out the the whole uh, parking lot because they've only got like probably two people working that restaurant. One person, really. They probably have like a supervisor and then they've got like one cook and that's all you've got working the fucking restaurant at night. But um, it came to- Sorry, a, bro. Yeah? Uh, grill, uh, sorry, bro. The uh, grill machine broke. Yeah, well, oh, we, dude. We could, if we use that excuse at a McDonald's, you get fucked. I don't think we could use that. Oh, yeah, yeah. If, you get, if you get caught on that, dude, you are, you are super fired. Super fucked, sure. yeah. <laughs> but um, the, uh, um, ooh, people are saying cucks? Oh, shit. I'm not Actually, dropping any no, friends. No. I wonder if Twitch is having problems. What? Actually, you haven't dropped for me at all. I yeah, keep no. saying that, but, I, but I'm, I'm good on my end. Yeah, I don't see any at all either, so it, it must be Twitch is having problems. Yeah. Unless people are trolling or whatever. But, um... Yeah, so it came to a point where I was getting really fucking tired of, like, my shift was like a fucking joke. The employees that I was getting on my fucking shift were unbelievable, unimaginable fucking employees. I got a guy called Tut who is fucking Sudanese. This guy didn't know what the fuck. Now there's anything wrong with Sudanese. He, but he was like, I think he was like from Sudan. He didn't know what the fuck a cheeseburger was. Okay, <laughs> this is a guy working in a diner. He didn't know what the fuck a cheeseburger was. This guy could barely read English. And I had to train this guy and teach this guy. And every time I brought in an employee, and I would always know too, like if I were to get like a cute girl employee, I knew what was up. She was there on my shift to get trained. And then as soon as she was trained up, they would suck her off and take her to the fucking yoink, yoink off to the day shift, yoink off to the swing shift. And they would throw me the next crazy ass fucking employee. I had some of the craziest fucking people. I had this 50 year old woman who I swear to God was a fucking crackhead. This chick would come in late half the fucking time. She was crazy. She would start fights with customers. Like, why the fuck do I get these employees at night? This is crazy. Um, and, like, it got to the point to where, like, um, oh I got an angry email from – it was either – I think Pam passed me down something where, like, uh, some, like, head and food, uh, head of food and beverage walked through the, the restaurant at, like, 12 a.m. And the, and the restaurant was really dirty. There were a lot of unbussed tables. I was like, dude, I can't fucking do this. There's no way. And so I was like, oh, I remember the advice that Pam gave me. I'm going to email Pam, and then I'm going to email the VP ahead of her. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to email the VP ahead of her and CC Pam, and I'm going to say, hey, listen – I'm not being scheduled with enough employees at night, okay? I am doing this job better than any other employee that you have can do it. I swear to you, and I can't get this done. I need more employees or else this is not possible, right? Damn, look at you, and, Alpha and, Wolf. No, nope, on. that was Alpha fucked in the ass. That was the beginning of uh, the end for my mm, time at the casino. You kept it real, man. You Keeping it real went wrong. Keeping it real went wrong. wrong. What? And that's yeah. when I found it. And it's ironic because I knew these strategies too, but um, what was being practiced on me from that point on, there's, there was a term that we had at the casino. When you've got an employee and you need to fire them because you don't like them or because they're black or because they're a woman or whatever, you just some shit that you can't like put on paper, we do this thing called paper them out the door. And that's where once you've been identified as you're on the shit list, you are going to get written up for every fucking random thing you've ever done. If you've ever been at a job, guys, and you either started getting written up for random shit or you've noticed another employee getting written up for random shit, it's because somebody has marked that person for deletion. That person's name Absolutely. has been written into somebody's death note and his execution is being carried out. You ever have that employee that all of a sudden is like, hey, listen, um, yesterday somebody ordered the double cheeseburger with bacon and we have a menu item for that but you just clicked the add bacon button and it charges 50 cents less we have to put you on final written warning for that right you ever run up with some random fucking shit like that happening it means that that person is marked and he is out the door and it started mm. it started happening to me where i started to get written up for like really random things like i had my boss bring me into the office one day she's like steven you clocked in like two minutes late like three times last week and i had been working there for four years and i I had never, I missed one shift in my whole time there. And it was for one night. And it was when my best friend committed suicide. It was the only time I ever missed a shift in my whole time there. And I was in work the next day for that. And it was, and I started to get written up for like clocking in like a couple minutes late. And I was like, okay, that's strange. Cause Mary All calls right. out literally like every fucking other day. And it somehow she still seems, but, but okay. Um, whatever. Mary's the next, that she was the, um, miscarriage woman who somehow was the next day shift manager. And I was always anxious at like 4am waiting for her fucking call in. Cause if she called in, I was going to be there fucking, Oh God, it was so stressful. Cause I, cause I, I would always get like a couple hours of sleep. Cause I would have an 11am class, I think on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And if I got out at 6am from the casino, I could sleep like four hours before class or three hours before class. And if she would call in, I wouldn't get any sleep and it fucked my whole day up. But anyway, 
that was the beginning of the end for me. Basically, a bunch of random shit happened. It came to a point. We came to a head where the final confrontation was. Some girl was trying to call out or something, and you know she was on nine points for her call outs. And I, you know, I called Pam the manager because I was like, hey, this girl's trying to FMLA on me, um, which is like uh, family medical leave of absence. And Pam was like, oh, well, she can't do that. And I was like, oh, okay, so I need to tell her that she's gonna get fired. And Pam's like, you can't tell her she's gonna get fired. That's not your job. I was like, okay, I mean, she's gonna have ten points. And um, basically, through the conversation with her, I got a call in. Like a week later, Pam called me into my goddamn ship four hours early. Four hours early. Four, four hours, hours early. early. I got called in at 6 p.m. I'm not supposed to start till 10. I got called in. I got a call at 4 p.m. I just got out of class. I got a call at 4 p.m. saying I need to come in at 6 p.m. I was like, okay. But it, but the call was from Pam's personal phone, so I couldn't ignore it. Normally, you know, I'd be like, whatever. And uh, yeah, uh, she uh, did, did the trap one. You see, by now you should have had everyone's number saved for sure. Yeah. That's like rookie one on one. Well, I, even so, Pam was like the, the manager. I would I could never ignore her, her calls because I figure some real shit's going down if she's calling. But uh, yeah, you know, I come right, in and right. she basically pulls me into her office and tells me that she's firing me because I swore at an employee. Uh, and then she pulled up that, that employee that I told was going to get uh, points or whatever. Um, she showed her a text message. And I was like, hey, like, just letting you know, like, if you, you know, if you call out, um, you know, we're going to get, you're going to get fucked or whatever. And she's like, yeah, you can't really say that to an employee. And the funny thing is that the only reason she had Jackie's texts is because Jackie didn't think she would get fired when she came in. And, and Pam was like, oh, well, why did you think that? And Jackie's like, oh, well, look, like I thought I was good. And she got my text messages to Jackie from her thinking Jack, cause Jackie thought she wasn't going to get fired, but then she got fired anyway. <laughs> and then I got fucking fired. And uh, yeah. And I was like, I couldn't even believe it when it happened. I was like, and that's when I realized that's when like all the V for Vendetta dominoes have came into play because I came in like the day after the HR and I was like, I can't really be getting fired. Right. Like I'm, this isn't happening. And they're like, wow, let's look up at your write up history. And that was when like all the dominoes fell. And I was like, Oh no, oh, I'm no. fucked. And they were like, well, did you really come in five minutes late? And I was like, yeah. And she's like, well, that's your written warning. Well, did you really mess up this piece of paperwork? And I was like, yeah. And she's like, well, that's your final written warning. It's like, oh God, I actually got fucking fired. And um, yeah, and I was, yeah, I was totally fucked. It was like, and the funny thing was that this was after I'd already failed music school. I went to school for music and I had to drop because I was missing too many tests because fucking I was, I would work like I was wearing like 60 hours a week, right. fucking overnights right, right. trying to do music school. It didn't work. I ended up failing college and I, you know, and it was funny because I had like these pivotal choices in my life it was like, I could do college and say fuck work and, you know, tone back my work. But realistically, I'm going to school for a, for a music performance degree. I don't know if I'm going to make a living doing that, but this casino shit, I fucking kill at this shit. I'm a boss at customer service, and I know all of these jobs. Like, oh, fuck it, you know? Oh, fuck school. I'll put it on the back burner, and I'll focus on my job at the casino. But the So I got fired at fucking fired at the casino after failing school for the casino. Um, yeah, and, and I remember spending the next, like, year living off of my 401k, applying to a ton of jobs, but I couldn't use my casino work experience because I'd gotten fired, so I couldn't put that on my fucking resume. And, um, yeah, and then eventually I started doing carpet cleaning, which was a whole other era of my life, which was fucking horrible. Um, I remember taking a stop at, at one point to reflect that in, like, I think, like, within the course of, like, 18 months, I had gone from making baller-ass fucking paychecks at the casino um, to playing poker with my best friend every Friday to, like, standing in somebody's fucking house with it being cold as fuck and my job was shit and my mortgage was falling behind and I was getting behind on all my fucking bills and I was at the point where, like, I would wake up and I would check my fucking phone and I'd be super nervous if I couldn't like get on the internet or whatever because I didn't know if my service had been shut off so like every time I, when you're like when you're shit, when you're super dude. fucking poor you always get like all the innocuous shit like makes you really worried where like um, sometimes you wake up and you're a little bit stressed to like turn on the sink because you don't know if the water is going to fucking come on or you you know you check your phone and you don't have any text messages and when you woke up and you don't know if it's because your service got shut off like real fucking stressful shit like that all the time and um, yeah and that was my that was like my life for like a year after that it was fucking horrible and um yeah i did the carpet cleaning shit and then yeah long story short that job was somehow managed to be worse than everything else because the the work was excruciating and i got paid shit for it because of the way that the jobs were scheduled um i guess um I, I so i fuck i feel like I, I tell the carpet cleaning shit i ran about this a lot on stream but i guess so if you're new here the problem with the carpet cleaning shit for me was your jobs were all commission and um your jobs were your jobs were uh, checking someone in chat said checking the mail is terrifying. I didn't get mail as much, but I remember like a weird thing. This is kind of weird to think about. Checking your bank account was terrifying, and I would never do it. I don't know how like this makes sense, but like when you're that fucked, I was always really scared to check my bank because I was scared that like if I would check it, like I didn't want to see it being in the negative, so I would just like never yeah, check yeah, my bank a, account. It's very similar to to credit score. I had a lot of friends who would mm -hmm. like 
Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't want to check it, bro. I, I know it's bad. I don't want to know. Yeah, like, they, and I they would like, want to know if it was beneath, like, like is it is it four hundred? Is it five hundred? I don't know, bro. I don't want to know. Yeah, and it. it's like I'm the weirdest. It's the weirdest thing, cause like, I mean, your money is there, no matter what. You know, whether it's whether you're in the negative or not, you know, you checking it doesn't. But I don't know if it's like fucking Schrodinger's balance where like maybe if I don't check it, maybe it could be OK. Maybe it's not OK. I just don't want to fucking think about it because as soon as the wave function collapses, it's going to be me having 52 different, you know, withdrawal penalties or whatever, like the overdraft fees. <laughs> but um, yeah, fun. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But the, the so basically the thing that sucked about the carpet cleaning was everything is scheduled on commission. So like, um, what would, what that would mean is I got paid. I think I had to be in the shop. It was either at six or 7 AM is when I had to be in the shop to get my truck ready. So the first jobs would start at either eight or 9 AM. And, uh, what you might have is you might have a job scheduled from 8 AM to 9 AM and you'll get paid, you know, $16 for that. If it's a minimum service job, your next job might be scheduled from like 11 to one, You probably make about $30 at that job. And then you might have another job scheduled from like four to five which is another $15 job. So you might make $60 that day, but the thing is you came in at six or 7 a.m. and because your last job finished at five, you're leaving at about six or 7 p.m. So you might be working these 10 or 12 hour shifts and then coming home with like 50, $60, depending on how fucked your day was. And you're, you're, yeah, it was super fucking horrible. And some of these jobs mm. were God awful, dude. We did, uh, I don't know if every carpet cleaning job is, but we did like water damage uh, restoration and shit so like going into a basement oh my god i remember the first time i handled fucking insulation I, I have you ever fucked with any of this shit no never nothing like this before no so i was like an idiot i didn't know right so basically you scorch a whole bunch of drywall um you you, you you'd cut a line into it and then you'd kick the drywall out and then i remember reaching in with my bare fucking hands just pulling out all of this fluffy it's just like fluffy pillowy insulation shit it doesn't hurt you at all I pull oh, it out yeah, 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 put yeah, it in, okay. in a hand that was not fluffy harmless insulation it's actually fiberglass and if you do that shit with your bare fucking hands it, your shit will be fucked for maybe a day or two like oh my god my shit would get so fucking itchy um and i didn't realize it until like a couple times doing this so i was like oh you're actually not supposed to put your bare hands on this shit but um oh, no. yeah i remember being in basements fucking um taking like a little fucking scraper and a hammer and and, and chipping out the fucking glue that they would use to oh god they, they, it was just fucking horrible and i got paid like my paychecks were like maybe 1500 like every two weeks Fifteen hundred and maybe two thousand dollars every two weeks, and I was working. It was seven like days a, a week with every other Sunday off, so I was essentially working like thirteen day shifts. And yeah, my whole life was like working this carpet cleaning job and making no fucking money. Um, and then uh, you know, on top of all this, I'm fighting with Rachel because we're breaking up, and you know the fucking yeah, holy shit, it was fucking horrible. But basically, at some point during this, um, I, I guess to kind of just like get into the early streaming stuff, um, I think it was. I'm pretty sure it was Kyle that suggested it to me, but there were some like either Korean or American people that sometimes streamed themselves playing video games online. And, you know, growing up through high school, I think I was decently funny and we always had a lot of fun playing games. I remember we would play, um, we would bring like the PlayStation to school. I think it was a PS2. We would play like Tekken and shit. Um, we did a lot of bad shit, dude. We would sneak out during church. We would sneak into like the band room in one of the practice rooms and turn all the lights off and shit. And we'd be playing like Tekken during like mass and whatnot. I went to a Catholic school <laughs> and, um, and, and yeah, anyway, yeah, Kyle, I, I think Kyle made me aware of this where he's like, oh, it's streaming. I was like, oh, shit, like I should fucking try this. And back in those days, I remember my old E6750 dual core processor trying to stream at 300 kilobits per second. I, you know, basically I got into <laughs> streaming and I would do that oh, like my in my God. free time, the little bit of free time I had after every after every job. Sometimes what I would do is I would go home and I would stream a little in between jobs. Um, I'm pretty sure these clips exist on YouTube somewhere where, um, you know, I pick up the phone and I'm like, hey, this is Steve with Guaranteed Clean. I'm just letting you know I'm running late on my on my last job, but I'll be at your house about a, an hour after we're scheduled so that I could play like a few more games. I'm pretty sure there are <laughs> YouTube videos of me like he's calling people and moving jobs back and shit. But um, yeah, basically, I think in 2010, in December, I got my first paycheck when they finally made it so you could run ads on the platform. I got my very first paycheck. And um, that paycheck was for like $210. Um, and I was like, oh, shit. Um, and I basically, I kind of did some quick math and I was like, oh, um, you know, I'm able to stream for X hours and I got paid 200 some dollars. If I were to just scale that up, I would make more money streaming a little bit more money streaming than I would doing carpet cleaning. And once I basically like math that out and like my life, my financial life was fucked anyway. You know, I defaulted on all my student loans. All of my, my house payments were like fucked. Like I was like calling like every few months to renegotiate a new payment or some shit. 
So I was like, fuck it, why not? Um, and I called, um, or I went into work and I told my, you know, guys like, Hey, sorry. Like my girlfriend is delivering her kid, even though it was like five months off or whatever. I was like, yeah, she's real pregnant. She's having a baby. So I got to quit. <laughs> and, um, yeah. And I picked up my last paycheck a couple weeks later and then I started to get into streaming. Yeah. Damn dude. That's fucking crazy. Uh, uh two things I want to bring up here. One, I, I saw, uh, uh, some reactions to, uh, 1500 to 2k every two weeks, not being a lot of money. Uh, when you, when you have Nathan, when you have, when you throw a child into the equation, out the window that goes man they how, how much you know how much of a money sink children are like yeah not only that dude, but kids like, are expensive man yeah the thing is is that like um I, this is always something that's been harder to communicate because like i was i've always been like a real life big boy that's had like real life responsibilities so like i have like a mortgage to pay i've got you know bills to pay i my parents don't pay my cell phone. My parents don't pay my car insurance. My parents don't pay, right? And I and I had like, um, for a long story, I had real expensive car insurance too. I think I I think it's called SR22. I had to carry SR22 insurance because I'd lost my license a couple of years earlier because I got dinged with a huge fucking speeding ticket going like one. I think he wrote me down to 145 or 135 and like a 65 when I was driving because Chris. Well, damn. Yeah, Chris. Um, so the friend that I would pick up every Friday to pick to play cards, um, to play poker with his. his uh, he lived in a little shitty ass city in, in Iowa called Malvern and it was all country road between here and there and uh, I would speed like a motherfucker I had my little Volkswagen GTI I would speed like a motherfucker um, going to and from you know his house to pick him up so yeah uh, but um yeah well, so yeah make so. feel better though I've, I've gotten a, a con dirty confession here I think I've I think I've just reached double digit amount of speed tickets in my life I okay. I've I've definitely gotten way too many to count because yeah, the problem same thing here too it's because out in the country in the country no one gives a fuck everyone's doing like dude minimum 70 honestly yeah so mm -hmm. I've been popped uh for a bunch of shit so I, yeah. I feel you on that one yeah so my car insurance is pretty expensive I was still making payments on my my Volkswagen my GTI which was like I think 300 a month plus I had a mortgage and then my utilities and everything like yeah I had it was just like a lot of people I noticed that like for a lot of streamers like or not a lot of streamers but I, I've met a lot of people who um who don't have to pay a lot of bills but um yeah like I said I was fully independent when I was 17 so my parents didn't cover anything for me and um yeah yeah for sure um, before you continue on about the um, about the uh, your your once the stream picked up and whatnot, two things here you brought up. I wanted to let you like go uh, uninterrupted here. Uh, m uh, you brought up here the boss that was always unreliable to you and constantly was you're in fear of them calling in. I had a similar n didn't affect me personally, but there was a at Chili's there was a boss. Her name was Melissa who had just had a child, and man, did she clutch onto that time and time again mm -hmm. um I, the the child i, mean, I think it was like maybe like a five-year-old daughter but like man this she got the red carpet bro she had she she had to work daytime shifts because you know the daughter was in school or whatever the fuck right and dude she got super i remember because i remember one of the other bosses at the time i think his name was uh james was like mega salty and would tell me about it because we were like we were boys back then but tell me how fucking butt mad he was because you know, you got the day shifts, but you had, you had the reliable cooks. You didn't have any of the drama. You had the easier shifts. You got the better numbers. You were likely to meet your uh, quarter quarterly um, um, review uh, targets because you just, you know, your inventory was good. Your numbers were good. Your servers were good. Everything was easier because it was daytime shifts, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so it was easier for her to climb corporate rankings and get raises because she wasn't stuck working the shithole night shifts that we all worked. Yeah. Big, big, big thing. And the other thing here, too, was the, the pretty hires, man. That was the trap. I can't tell you how often the same fucking thing, dude. The hiring manager is some fucking old horny ass um, midlife crisis oh, dude at, yeah. at the restaurant. And it's like Chrissy, Christina, um, Kirsten. Do you ever watch Brit you ever watch the movie Whiplash? Oh. I, I I haven't. I, I it's on my queue. There's list, a though. part. I have watched. There's a part in the movie. There's a part in the movie where he's going down. Um, where he's having a bunch of saxophones playing melody, and he gets to the first saxophone, and it's a and it's a girl, and he says he just says some offhanded comment. He's like, "Let's see if you're here because you're good or because you're pretty." And and she fucks up. And he's like, "Yeah, I thought so." All right, that it, that I'm sorry. That line reminds me though, where sometimes I would walk in, and you know, there would be like an employee like fucking everything. I was like, "What the fuck is going on?" But then I would actually see her, and I'd be like, "Okay, gotcha." Like <laughs> I understand. Yeah, <laughs> I know exactly worst, why man. you're here. Yeah. There was one point where I was the only uh, – there was only two remaining um, trainer-certified uh, waiters. It was mm -hmm. me and another girl named Paige. And so we didn't do any of the hiring. We did none of the interview process, but we were the ones forced to, to, to train the new hires at the restaurant. And I'm just like – and there were some people like day one, I'm like – I mean, sure, she's cute, but she's like, she's like a, there's a, it's a bag of bricks in her brain, dude. Are you kidding me? Like, 
zero social skills, zero contextual awareness, no spatial awareness, runs into the wall, runs to other people. They, you know, the rest are moving fast. And she's like moving slow and shit, checking her phone, not, not into anything else. Like, I'm like, you need to focus, man. You suck at your job, dude. Yeah. And it was like, I can tell by day one, I'm like, this, it's, it's a five day training program. You're supposed to be on your own by day four. And you are, you're, you're a joke. You don't even get like, like our, our menu is a joke. It's not like you have to learn chimichangas, fajitas, and quesadillas. You, you have to, you just have to learn the shit you already eat, make mm -hmm. macaroni and, and burgers and shit. Like you don't even know the fucking menu. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Dude, it was, it was super exhausting. It, it mega, I feel like nothing's worse than you have a five day trainee and you feel like you're wasting your time at the day one. Literally, it, it's very interesting to see the difference between like the kids that would work too versus like the older people that would work. Like in terms of like being hungry for hours or hungry for shifts. Like I remember like the kid, like the younger employees would always be like real excited to get off early every single day. We'd have mm -hmm. these employees that would go home like two or three hours early every single day. It's like why the fuck are you working? Do you have fucking bills to pay? Dude. Like the fuck is going on? Like what? So funny thing about this. Sorry, there was a period that I didn't even bring cover here in the um in my 2007 depression where for like one month I worked at a Posados. It was another Mexican restaurant, mm -hmm. and this one here was like ran by teenagers. It was really weird. It was like all teenagers who were the waiting staff with like old people being the managers, and they had this really weird system where it was open shifts in that uh, every weekday night because it was like a lower demand for shifts whoever could whoever came in early was first cut and the way to come in early was just to walk in at 3 30 and sign the clipboard and that's literally it so what would happen it was this really weird thing where people would they would run in and they would camp because they wanted they wanted to make money but they wanted to be the first out so bad that they would come in like they would run to the clipboard at 3.30 to be the first one signed on there. Then the clipboard went up there and live. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, they were, like you said, they were, they were in a, they were in such a rush to, I guess, make mom happy because they have to, because they have to go work or whatever, but they want to get the fuck out of their ASAP and they want to be first cut. So they would just, they were in a, they would rush and even, they would even camp. They would come early before the clipboard was up and just wait and then run over like and go sign the clipboard. They, they can be the first one out. Yeah. those are weird. Uh, like why the fuck yeah, are you even here? Really like. Weird. Yeah, like they they didn't they didn't observe that you know if you had a higher volume of tables served you would likely or make more money but they just wanted to be out asap. Mm -hmm. Single single club in the night or some bullshit or whatever. I don't yeah. even fucking know. But um, no, that's actually really cool though. I'm I'm um yeah you had a real rags to riches story there uh, and then some. Yeah, a little bit. So um, so you so did the streaming thing and then when did you blow up though? Like when when did it when did it become like, you know, your the destiny? Was it always a debate thing? How did how did the debates come to play? I never actually blew up. It was always just kind of like a, a pretty I was always on like a grind. I was like pretty a, a pretty consistent grind. Um when I started streaming early on, uh back in those days the big fight was getting featured on Team Liquid. Uh, I don't know if you ever, do you know what site this is? Have you ever heard of that site, yeah. Team Liquid? Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, because that's where all the viewers came from. People would go to Team Liquid and then click off on the streams on the side there to watch them. But um, yeah, I remember that like I was just I started growing, I started streaming, I continued streaming, I kept growing. People liked me because I was super ragey. Um, I was pretty funny. I was pr pretty smart. Um, I think I had like a decent like amount of life experience compared to a lot of other people, so I could bring in a lot of that, you know, to make things more entertaining. And you know, I'd spent my whole life. Um, my whole life was spent on Battle.net chat rooms insulting people. That was like you lived or died by, I don't know if Kyle remembers this, if he's online or not. I'm pretty sure this irritated the fuck out of growing up, but like the most important thing to me was being able to trash talk people online. And I even downloaded, <laughs> I remember there's a program called StealthBot, where you could download a program that would let you ch like chat in Battle.net chat rooms without actually being logged into Battle.net. Like you didn't have to open up the whole StarCraft client or whatever. Um, you could just use this bot to, to shit talk people. But yeah, so I'd spent like my whole life basically practicing for a job that I didn't know I would have later on. And like being able to cleverly insult people and do all of that was was kind of like a big thing growing up for me not growing up but um but in my in the early parts of my streaming career that kind of like got me popular and it eventually got to the point to where i was um yeah i was one of them i think i was like the one of the more popular streamers borderline the most popular streamer but i couldn't get featured on team liquid because that site was a site where um you had to be in with the crowd in order to do anything and i definitely wasn't on the in crowd at all and um it, yeah it was very awkward i remember that all my fans would be like you know like yo feature and what the fuck is going on and i wouldn't get featured even though i had more viewers than like all the other featured streamers and then i remember the day i finally got featured everybody was so fucking like oh it's amazing it was so happy and then yeah for a while i was the largest streamer i guess in the world because starcraft 2 was the biggest game in the world and i was the biggest streamer in the game and then slowly the sleeping giant league of legends started to creep up these you know mm -hmm. five figure streamers started to appear on own they didn't just appear they'd been streaming for a long time as well and then owned went under and you know they came over to twitch and then league grew starcraft died and yeah but yeah 
It, uh, one small thing about that. You, uh, you brought your life experiences to streaming. That's the same thing for me because I didn't um, – with waiting tables, I didn't – I never really realized that uh, waiting tables was a, essentially – a uh, 24/7 practice on sociology and communication. Like I'm, I'm analyzing like my clientele really quickly. I'm getting hard reads on like, are they here for, are they here to see a movie? Are they here because they're in a family outing? Are they here because they're in a rush? You know, mm -hmm. you get that. You, you infer all that stuff from the initial observation very quickly and try to try to like calculate as hard as you can there to make a connection as fast as possible mm -hmm. to come off as genuine. And then you add in the the charisma factor, you know, I, I had to like work on like not only explaining the menu really well, but making the act of ordering food as conversational as possible. Like, don't be the robot. Yes, you ordered a number two with the fries. Is that confirmed? You know, you have to like conversational. Yeah, yeah. So you want to you want to do the mix and match with the half rack of ribs. You can do any flavor you want, by the way. If you want to do the brown sugar first, I'm a bigger fan of the uh, of the um, honey sriracha flavor ribs. If you'd like to do that, I can recommend that for you. Um, if you want to go a little more higher on the protein, you can get a margarita grilled chicken. But if you'd rather have a little more of, a, of the cheat thing, I would say you can probably get a six-ounce sirloin cooked however you want. It comes with the butter on top. And then along with that, you know, you make it as conversational as possible. And just really flex on the food really, really hard. One of, so, the, um, one of the tricks that I learned really early on, I don't know if he actually did this, but I feel like I read a quote at some point in time that Abraham Lincoln, what he would do is every time he would talk to a person, he would try to remember one fact about them and then their name. And then the next time you see them, if you bring up that one fact that you remembered about them, they felt like you remembered everything. And I, I yeah. did that for a lot of customers at the casino where every, cause every old person has their stories of their grandchildren or some shit. And I would always try to remember. Mm -hmm. So they would come in like, Hey, like, you know, your grandson is born now. Right. Or, Hey, like how's your, whatever doing? Or, Hey, did you guys end up taking that vacation? And people would love you for doing that. Oh, shit. they eat it up, dude. They mm -hmm. definitely do. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. So, um, but yeah, all that was practice for the accidental, um, planning of the streaming thing, because in the beginning, when I was a younger streamer with the 300 viewers and I would do like the Yoshi Island, Mario speed running, that would get viewers in there, but I actually would, I would reach my peak viewership, um, afterward because I was so bad or the game demands so much of my attention that I couldn't conversate while playing. I would just sit there and like have the controller cam going on because I'm hitting I'm hitting all the buttons really, really fast with my high APM and everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the end of the game was when I could then read Twitch chat and answer questions. And when I did, I was so I was so elaborative and overkill on giving a, a, a detailed, thorough, nuanced answer to every question they had that it became like an amateur QA hour for like an hour after because I, I got so behind on, on Twitch chat because they're asking so many questions. Mm -hmm. And that's when I was hitting my peak view count. And so I realized that, oh, the me being a waiter was training for me to be an accidental good streamer. Okay, yeah, it can be. Pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. So that was uh, so it's funny that the, the whole thing worked out in that uh, retail. Also, it humbles you too, man, because like, you know, having me and you both having worked the restaurant hell, having worked retail, um, you know, I can comfortably say I'm much happier doing this compared to that. And I know what that involves. I didn't even get into this other part here too, where I, where I did have a genuine opportunity to become a certified manager at Chili's in 2011, but I, I, I dropped it. I did it for eight weeks and I, I realized that I legit hate corporate ladder climbing because it's all lies and bullshit anyway. Like all of it's lies, like all of it's fucking terrible. I would never want to do that ever again. Yeah. And being on the, being on the normal grind, especially if you're working a lot, is really, really rough. There are certain parts of it. Um, I remember there are certain things that are absolutely soul crushing. The worst thing that I experienced, this was when I was putting in the most hours for, um, for working at the casino, which wasn't as often, but then when I started to do the carpet cleaning, the worst, one of the worst feelings in the world is coming home exhausted going to sleep almost immediately and then having to wake up and go, go right back to right work. Back. Doing That's that shit literally... for weeks and weeks and months is the most dehumanizing, soul-crushing experience that a person can ever fucking feel. Holy shit, it is so fucking bad. Yeah, no. Okay, so now now you now you got me triggered. I got to tell you about it. They they offered me a um, management certification, which was a uh, it was an eight week trial where I had the comp card, I had the power of a manager, but I didn't have to pay. So I was getting paid like twelve an hour to essentially manage the restaurant along with another manager. Like, I, like it wasn't even like we were overstaffed, right? We didn't have we weren't competently staffed with the appropriate amount of managers. It was again the mm -hmm. the two a day, and I was the much needed three of when we really needed minimum four. Mm -hmm. So I was now an active manager. Um, and what quickly happened here was I had non-negotiable 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. every day. That was the on paper hours, but that never was the case because by 10 p.m. It was, it was a dumpster fire. Every night we had walkouts, we had comps, $400 plus in comps. We had 45-minute ticket times, and it should be 25-minute ticket times at worst. 
Like, dude, the whole thing. Like, it was never like if I left at 10 p.m., the restaurant was in flames. Like, there was no way I could leave in good conscience because we had we were sinking and I had to recover somehow. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I um yeah, it was mega exhausting. I would rarely leave at 10 o'clock. I would usually leave around 11:30. And you're right. You, you you leave eleven thirty. You come home. You smell like fucking fajita juice and, and salsa and, and fucking everything else. Mm -hmm. um, I take a shower. Um, I'm in bed before one a.m. and it's like I have to be up. I have to be on my way to work at nine thirty. So I have to be up at eight thirty. Yeah. Dude, I'm going to bed at one. I'm getting maybe seven and a half hours if I'm lucky. And here's the worst part, right? You do that day in and day out, like you said here. You walk back in. You walk back in the restaurant and it feels like a windowed prison. Mm -hmm. You feel like. You're like, dude, I, this day is so beautiful right now, and I'm stuck in this fucking shithole for another who even knows how long, 12, 13, 14 hours. And then not only that, but uh, my only stimulant in the world was hearing the other waiters who I used to be with. Uh, now I'm a manager. I'm in a different ecosystem now. Hearing the waiters uh, gossip about you know them going out, going clubbing, you know whatever, who fucked who and whatever. And it's all a giant high school with the gossip and whatnot. So the uh, – and yeah, my only stimulant of the outside world because I'm not watching TV, I'm not consuming media. I'm I literally go home and fall asleep because I have no, I, I'm fucking yeah. exhausted. And it's like there was a point where like by the by like week six, I, I I'm in Chili's all day. I come home, I fall asleep, I have dreams about Chili's, and then I go to Chili's again. There was no escape. Even sleeping was fucking Chili's, dude. It, it, I my quality of life plummeted so quickly I, I could not believe how possible this was it, it can it can drop so quickly mm -hmm. it was dude, it was terrible i was legit having like panic attacks and and i was having like what felt like claustrophobia attacks of anxiety while being in the restaurant i felt like i was like I felt like the walls are closing on me a couple times um y'all it mentally drains you to have to go to table after table and just apologize and get shitted on when you know it's not your fault. You want to fire everyone and and totally um, renovate the staff, but you don't have that power. It's like I, I I'm sitting here. You expect me to you know chisel the statue of David with a fucking nail and yeah. a, like a nail in my own bare teeth, dude. Like just beating my head against the nail against the fucking marble, dude. That's what it felt like. I need tools. I don't have the fucking tools, man. Yeah. So yeah, I, I but yeah, that, that that's what led to me saying a giant no. Because I really thought, yeah, I'm gonna be a manager at Chili's. I'm gonna like, you know, it's a Forbes 500 company, Rinker International, the parent company of Chili's. Yeah, I'm, I'm a fucking, I'm gonna do here, kick ass, and have a fucking banger resume. And then two years later, I'm, I'm gonna dip out and get a better job. That was my idea back when I was like 22, and I was a fucking idiot back then. Because holy shit, dude, fuck that. Yeah. I and this is like this is kind of the shit that I talk about where I say that like I feel like college and everything is fucked. Because, like, you have no idea when you're 18 about fucking anything. Like, if you could go back, if you could go back and ha and they made you work from 18 to 20, and then starting at 20, you go to college, dude, mm -hmm. I feel like those would be the best fucking students in the world. If I could go back and redo school, like, after having had to work or whatever, or even, like, redo parts of high school, I would be, like, a million times of a better student. It's like, I am not going to live the rest of my life working these shit-ass fucking jobs and being, Motivation. like, chained. Yeah, holy fuck, you know? Like, doing shit, like, getting, like, spending a couple extra hours a day, like, studying for my, a better GPA or some shit is so much better than the horrible fucking future of you know fucking up college or fucking up high school or whatever would be so much better i'll do you one better i actually like the um the japan school system where high school is optional like um you you do middle school and then mm -hmm. there's a high school entrance exam that you have to like study your ass off for that requires like a, a deliberate effort to enter into and if you don't want to do high school you don't have to if you want to be you know whatever 15 16 and go into the workforce and make dog shit money you can if you want to or go to a trade school of some sort um because I, I knew many students who were completely unmotivated in high school and were there only because they had to be because they had never been reinforced with the real world alternative of no higher education and just being stuck working dead end job to a dead end job living check the check or whatever mm -hmm. even if you, even then so i feel like uh high school being optional and letting the arrogant ones who just say you know fuck school man school fucking whack you know let them go. Go to McDonald's, man. Go work there and let me know how well it works out for you after like year two. Yeah. You know? So um I actually want to look further into it. But uh I, from what I understand, this is, this is generally how the uh, the Japanese school system works, is that high school is optional with an entrance exam and then uh it gets everyone mega motivated to to get into it at that point. Gotcha. I I don't know shit about the Japanese system of doing things, so yeah. <clears throat> 
but it, it is a fair critique though that generally the because it's like reinforcing the parents that most usually them going to high school anyway so like the the interest exam that that's meant to deter people to like appreciate high school mm -hmm. generally do the exam anyway so i feel like the the effect it would have on the american public would be uh would be uh, much more effective than it is now in the japanese public maybe yeah i don't know it's hard to say just because there are so many other problems here yeah, i don't know yeah you're right it, it, you're right education paradigm is a a topic i'd love to get into at another point in the future for sure but uh but yeah so then um so you're 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 you grind you become a big a big streamer successful streamer from a combination of team liquid um grinding and everything else mm -hmm. and then um i i blew up a mario maker when did we uh are we now getting to the point where we figure out when we collide how did the podcast start yeah um i mean like i think we'd always like i mean we've got a fuck ton of mutuals um I, but I don't think we'd ever. Do, I think, fuck. We must have spoken at some random podcast like mm -hmm. once or twice. Yeah, I, I I recall actually. It was um before Trainwrecks did the Trainwreck stuff podcast. Uh -huh. uh, Greek Greek had it. Greek God X had his own podcast prior, and uh, at one point Greek had me and you on together, and I was like, oh shit, I'm on the podcast with the Destiny. Holy fuck, dude. I was I was kind of fangirling a little bit, miming a lot of you. Um. And yeah, we, we both brought the high IQ to the podcast or or some level of productiveness to it. Uh, I forget what particular episode we were we both talking about a, a certain topic, but mm -hmm. yeah, man, the the bromance and the, and the um and the complimentariness to one another was uh, strong from the very jump. Yeah, and, and that's then, where um, that's where it kind of started. Kind of, yeah. And then the the big thing was probably the the train wrecks podcast is where we really talked more because I I remember the Greek god thing, but I didn't know you as well. I, honestly, I didn't I didn't know if you were Trax or Tryhard. I didn't even know what your stream name was <laughs> because I because I'd always seen like both things and I didn't actually know one hundred percent for sure. And I never watched any streams ever, so I'm like totally ignorant about so much of Twitch's culture, which felt really dumb at the time. But um, yeah. But then I I think more um we talked more on like the train wrecks podcast and then that's when we kind of um got to know each other more and then floated the idea of doing like a more uh, like just a little bit more of um i was gonna say a try hard podcast but that's not really appropriate here a more of a um, like a structured <laughs> like a structured podcast Unplanned that with, pun. yeah a little bit more serious topics and whatnot yeah yeah the biggest bromance i actually remember the episode it was the one where the um um the jacksonville shooting happened yeah. and we had the it was a big debate with uh you know, me, you, me, you. I guess kind of like it kind of felt like it was like me, you versus Asmund Gold for a while there, and uh, and I think Espen too, but yeah, and then it kind of derailed into another heavy topic about the kneeling in the NFL, and then then we had to get on, we had to like school them. I think we kind of like tattooed them. We schooled them on uh, Black Lives Matter because um, they were disagreeing with the yeah, because it had to do with the thing that like oh well, you know, cops shoot. It was when it was an All Lives Matter argument where it's like, well, wait, hold yeah, on, these correct. are black problems. These are problems that everybody has. Like yeah, and then it was like, yeah. and then one of those arguments where it's like, show me black, show me cops running around saying I hate n words. If that's not happening, there's no racism. But it's like oh, okay, yeah, all right, yeah, yeah, and that's where we like we like really like we tag team on that like an unplanned tag team on that on that debate tactic, mm -hmm. and then uh yeah, that and then from there it was like, there may be something here. And then, and then the next thing that happened was, um, well, unfortunately, uh, train wrecks got the 30 day ban and then there was no podcast. There was nothing like bringing us all together. So then we, me and you did the, the, the improv thing, right? We did that, that spawn, that spontaneous five hour, uh, podcast of, of nothingness mm -hmm. where it was like me, you and Lakari and, uh, and, and Mouton. And then, um. And then yeah, that that went well. We we proved that we had the chops to like carry some kind of conversation and 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 production value into a podcast with a structured topic list. So then, a couple weeks later, came the thing we're on now, the DT podcast. Yep, and here we are, six episodes in. Yeah, yeah. And uh, with, and with that now, now I know Destiny's a uh, backstory. He knows mine. We know where we overlap, and I think uh, this will lead to better episodes from here onward because now we have that that. We have the synergy, but now we also have the the bromance Hopefully, in there. Yeah, yeah. All right. Do you have um? We could do question at the end. We're already kind of over. I think we're at like two and a half hours right now. So yeah. Um. Do you that's have any... a, that's kind of. Oh, go, go, go ahead. I was gonna say, do you have any like final things or whatever you want to hit on or? Um. Oh shit, dude. Let me think here. Uh, final things about the about. Yeah, so the climb the climb has been real. Uh, I'm still an eternal student. I'm still learning to get better myself here with the entire uh, thing. I'm I'm very very new to podcasting, so I do try to work on a lot of habits. I know I repeat a lot of words frequently, mm -hmm. so I'm working on um, uh, uh, getting better elaborative on my vocabulary and, and using less habitual things. I'm trying to get like Destiny. I'm trying to get like you, man. You're like the big brother, I'm trying to get there. <laughs> okay. So um, yeah, I mean, I'm flattery. trying to. Yeah, I'm always working on my stuff too and reading shit and. 
Uh, God, I've been clicking through some of these old posts that I made on um, Team Liquid. Holy shit, I used to be so much more pure. I feel so... <laughs> I feel so mm -hmm. dead inside. Compared to you know what's time. funny? Yeah. Me and you actually have overlap there. I um, when I was speed running back in 2011, uh, one of the regulars at Team Liquid actually uh gave me a shout out in one of the forums, mm -hmm. and my first time ever getting a triple digit view count. Um, because I used to, because like in 2011, I had like a like a 35 to 40 viewer average, mm -hmm. and uh, some guy was like, "Yo, you gotta watch this guy. He's crazy. Yo, Shylin, bro." And um, and uh, I. I uh he gave me a shout out on the forum on a Team Liquid thread and I had 150 viewers and these uh these StarCraft uh boys were like there's no dude what's this guy's APM man it's gotta be it's gotta be fucking crazy bro and uh -huh. uh, then like one guy just said you know it was gotta be at least at 150 man I'm looking at him right now he's going he's going crazy on that controller bro and so uh that's where the whole like I didn't know that having a high APM in a platformer was considered impressive because I, I didn't know any better mm -hmm. so that's so because of the some some rando on 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 Team Liquid's forum is when I, I came up with the idea of bragging about having a high APM for a for a controller platformer in speedrunning. Sure. So that was uh, where that came from. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a... I guess like a final takeaway, um, something that I like to, to kind of like to, to frame this in a perspective. I know that a lot of people look at... Um, I'll hijack Trihex's story a little bit here too. I know that a lot of people like to look at stories like this and think that like, oh, you know, this is really cool. Um, you know, like anybody can do anything and anybody can become anything and blah, 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 it, which is true to some extent or which is true to a large extent, at least in the US, you know, technically at any point in time, anybody could do anything. But um, at least for my life, and I'm sure Trihex probably agrees, um, I was very close to being, uh, you know, fucked for the rest of my life, like pretty easily, you know? Uh, the, the fact that streaming worked out for me was... <clears throat> A lot of my own knowledge and a lot of my own kind of talent and skill and my perseverance, but it was also a lot of luck too. You know, had I been born five year, had I been born one year earlier, um, I probably would have never been a streamer because the technology just wasn't there. It was barely starting. And you know, had I been born five years later, you know, the market might have been too saturated for me to have ever gotten into it at all. So I, you know, I was very close to being fucked for like my entire fucking life. It would have been fucking horrible. And um, for for every one person you see that did make it, there's probably you know like five million more that are on that grind perpetually that are completely fucked for the rest of your life. So if you're here, um, if you're already fucked, sorry, you're fucked. This message isn't for you. If you're not quite fucked yet, if you're in school or whatever, um, man, fucking focus on your shit. You know, whether you have to study a little bit more or you have to do something to carry that GPA or it seems dumb now, like, man, it really sucks and it's not fair. But, you know, the choices that you make today, you know, when you're going to college or if you're still in high school even, will affect you for the rest of your life. Even if it seems stupid, even if you hear older kids talk about, oh, high school didn't mean shit. You know, high school doesn't mean shit. Bullshit, it doesn't. High school Bullshit, is where you line dude. yourself. Fucking grade school means a lot. Like, grade school is when you start to get into those honors classes that are going to determine whether or not you take EP classes in high school. And high school is where you're going to get the GPA and the score to get a scholarship. And scholarships are going to determine where you go to school, what you study. Like, man, that shit is important. Like fucking, it, it seems dumb now, but grind that shit fucking hard because you have no idea how much different your life is going to be compared to fucking your shit up in college versus, you know, like applying yourself just a little bit more and, and trying hard. And however fucked you think you are now, you know, going to college and having to study more, um, at least you've got shit to look forward to. You know, something I bring up a lot that a lot of people, you know, I see a lot of people run like poor experiments to see what it's like to be poor. The, the worst part about being poor for me, I can't claim to speak for all poor people, but the worst part about being poor isn't falling behind on your bills or, you know, um, you know, even not necessarily having enough to eat for a particular day or not being able to buy anything or hang out with your friends. The worst part about being poor is the hopelessness. It's the idea that you are in a certain situation, working a job that you're never going to get promoted at with no ability to go back to school and no ability to get hired for anything different. Different. It's it's the it's the absolute knowledge that for the rest of your life you are going to be fucked for your entire life, and that's like a really hard thing to understand if you're not quite in that situation yet. So fucking do your best at school and don't fuck your shit up, guys. All right, stay yeah. in school and try a little bit harder than you are now. Okay. Yeah. I will double down that because uh, the the importance of AP class I think is a thing that's understated a lot here. Uh, AP advanced placement uh, or and or gifted talented classes. Typically, you have a smaller classroom size when you're in the gifted AP program. And in general, I would say you're more – it's easier to be more productive in those classes. Mm -hmm. You know, usually the teacher with an average like 25 to 33 student size classroom, it, all, all the, the bottom 20% of the kids are acting up and being talkative, uh, disrupt, interrupt, and derail the class frequently. And when you're in AP, everyone actually gives a shit. And at that point, you're just you're, – you're able to infinitely move on. Like you can get into like – that is you know, you so can be in algebra. 
one million percent true. I remember the difference because most of my classes where I was on all like honors or AP classes, say for history, I didn't take a push um, or, or AP. I think there was AP world history, AP European history. I didn't take any AP um, history classes. And then we always had our religion classes. And it was so crazy how many different faces I would see in those classes that were none no calc classes, no fucking any chemistry, none of that. They were in none of those other classes. But the ones that I would see, those classes were so much fucking worse than um <laughs> than my AP ones. Oh my god! Not to shit on any of those kids. Sorry, I love you all very much. But like, yeah, yeah for sure. the um the caliber of person in those classes was much fucking different. Holy shit! Definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we'll have to actually like, we'll talk about high school at some point here too, because I feel like uh that's another one that gets another uh another big uh thing is like high school was terrible but it's a unique kind of terrible that kind of like forms you for like the kind of forms you in a, in a weird way for the real world but another time another day though for sure yeah um but yeah i think i'm i think i'm good here i know we're, we're over time already here yeah and yeah we yeah have a, so uh, sorry about the so we're, we're gonna skip questions this week i assume yeah i think we'll okay we'll, we'll have yeah, some yeah, next week okay. all right yeah, um sure. i don't know if we're gonna do this next week um, I, I, do you know if you're available next week? The 26th, the day after the Christmas. 26th. Ooh, ah, fuck. Okay. Actually, you know, what's weird about that. I have, um, uh, okay. So I, my God children, I told them I would take them and do things with them. Mm -hmm. I can't really do things with them on Christmas day because everything's closed. Like they're going to like want to go like to books a million and read books and shit. They actually are, they're all like big book readers now. Mm hmm um, so I'm thinking about taking them on the 26th to go do shit. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, I, I don't know because we're all be moving and, and I'll, I don't know if I'll be set up 100% to do things as well. So okay, yeah, okay. we may, we may or may not be back on the, yeah. um, on the 26th, but we'll, do you think it'll be available on the second? That's the day after. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'll be good. I'll yeah. be good there. Okay. Yeah. So you might see us in one week. You might see us in two weeks, but thanks a lot for joining us. This has been episode six. Um, yes. Our filler. We're getting the filler episodes out of the way real early. And then, yeah, next time we may <laughs> man have a guest. We'll see. Stay tuned. Don't check my Twitter because I don't have one. But, um, yeah, we'll communicate on stream or whatever. <laughs> yeah. For sure, man. Thanks a lot and for likewise. joining us. Thank you, everyone. Yep. Have a good one, guys. Later.